from KPAX and MTN Sports. This is Grizzly Gridiron Classics. Welcome back to our second week of the Grizzly Gridiron Classics. Today, we venture back to 1997 for a classic between fierce rivals Montana and Montana State. The Grizzlies enter the game on an 11-game winning streak against their rivals with plenty of blowouts, but 1997 was a little bit different. Some late-game heroics were needed from the likes of Brian Ayotte, Justin Olson, and Chris Hepner to preserve the streak in one of the most thrilling contests in this storied rivalry. The first quarter of that matchup between the Cats and Grizz in 1997 will begin after this. It's time for kickoff on Grizzly Gridiron Classics. When the season began, expectations were high for the Montana Grizzlies, and rightfully so. The team had made two straight appearances in the national championship game. Down in Bozeman, a feeling of optimism was flowing as well. The Montana State Bobcats looking to post their first back-to-back -back winning seasons since 1979. And as we enter the final week of the 1997 season, these two Treasure State rivals are dead even in the conference standings. The Grizz need a win to have any chance at the postseason. The Cats want to end an 11-year losing streak. It's Big Sky Conference football. The Montana Grizzlies and the Montana State Bobcats. Kickoff of the Montana Power Fall Classic is coming up. From Reno H. Sales Stadium on the campus of Montana State University, it's Big Sky Conference football, the Montana Power Fall Classic, the Montana Grizzlies and the Montana State Bobcats. Hi, everybody. Shane Edinger here with you on a very spectacular Saturday afternoon. I'm joined by former Montana Grizzly wide receiver Matt Clark and former Montana State linebacker Mike Callahan. And, Mike, let's start with you. Talk a little bit about the defense. Both of these teams, some real strong defensive units. They really do, Shane. I think for MSU to have success on defense today, they're really going to have to pressure the quarterback. That pressure is going to come from Neil Smith, their senior defensive end, who's had a great year and leads the team with 16 and a half sacks. The other side of the ball, it's no secret for the Grizzlies. Their big play guy is inside linebacker Jason Crepo. Jason's been hobbled a little bit as late with an injury, but uh, he's going to have to step up big today if they're going to shut down the Bobcat rushing attack. Switch gears just a little bit, talk with Matt about the offense. And Matt, traditionally Montana State, a good running football team, but this year both teams real good at throwing the football. Yeah, Montana's Brian Ayad, despite being injured for the first half of the season, has still managed to pass for 2,300 yards and 19 TDs. And over the second half of the conference schedule has really returned to his All-American form of 1996. On the other side of the ball, Rob Compson of Montana State has been one of the big surprises in the Big Sky Conference. He so far has passed for just short of 2,200 yards, and his ability to scramble may cause problems for the Grizzly defense this afternoon. It's the Bobcats and the Grizzlies. This is what it's all about in the state of Montana, folks. The Montana Power Fall Classic. We've got your kickup coming up right after this. Today's game between the University of Montana Grizzlies and the Montana State University Bobcats is brought to you by the Montana Power Company. It's a wonderful life. Tyorama, the name you know and trust. D.A. Davidson, where Wall Street meets the Rockies. Your local Chevy dealer, home of full-size Chevy pickups, the most dependable trucks on the road. And Norwest Bank, to the nth degree. Good afternoon, everybody. We are here at Reno H. Sales Stadium in Bozeman, Montana. Getting ready to kick off the Montana Power Fall Classic. It's the Montana State Bobcats and the Montana Grizzlies. It's sitting here next to two former Bobcat and a former Grizzly. Kind of give me your thoughts, guys, on this game. Your well, thoughts. It seems like in the past uh, it's been a, a pride factor in the state of Montana to win this game, but this one has uh, even larger ramifications just to see who finishes in second place in the Big Sky Conference. I think it really does mean something this year, Shane, and it's got a chance the Bobcats really feel like this can turn the tide in state and get them back on the right track if they can play well today. Well, we're getting ready to kick off this football game here in Bozeman. Chris Hepner will kick off for the Montana Grizzlies. Your return men today for Montana State are Lathian Tyler and Ari Gray. Ari Gray is just a true freshman, but uh, seen a lot of time with the uh, injuries that have occurred to the Bobcat receivers this year. Looks like we've got a little confusion on the field. The Bobcats want to head the other way here in the first quarter, so we're going to switch sides and set things up again. There's a little bit of a delay here. 
but that's okay. We can work with it. Let's talk a little bit about the head coaches. Mick Dennehy in his second year at Montana. Cliff Heisel in his sixth year at Montana State. Well, oh, Mick Dennehy, Dennehy has just kind of continued on the dynasty that Don Reed has started at the University of Montana. Um, uh, a Montana boy played for the University of Montana, uh, and uh, he's just trying to continue his winning ways. He's 1-0 against Montana State, and he's hoping to finish up 2-0 after today's ball game. We'll talk about Cliff Heisel in just a second, but we're ready for kickoff. Chris Hepner sends this one deep. That's Lathy and Tyler on the return. He's got it at the three, across the 10, takes it to the right side, across the 20, spots a hole, and gets knocked down at about the 30-yard line. So that's where the Montana State Bobcats will start things. It's a good return for the Bobcats. They really had a nice wall set up in front of Lathy and Tyler there, and he was able to get it upfield. Talk a little bit about the starting lineups for the Montana State Bobcats at quarterback. It is Rob Thompson. He'll be flanked in the backfield by Lathy and Tyler and Travis Cormany. Your linemen, Adam Houts, Brian Archdale, Brad Callen, Denver Stairs, and Josh Hausman. Your wide receivers, Tony Valles and Craig Galley. And your tight end is Scott Harry. It's first and 10 from the 29-yard line. Thompson with the pitch to Lathy and Tyler to the left side. He gets across the 30, maybe out to the 31. Gain of about two yards. Just a quick little sweep uh, to the left for uh, Montana State Bobcats. Good pursuit by the Grizzly defense. Uh, had that one smelled out and stopped it right in their tracks. They really did, and the Bobcats, really, it's important for them. And talking to Jim McQuinn yesterday, they need to establish the running game early so they can keep the Grizzlies on their heels a little bit. Brings up second down and eight from the 31-yard line for the Montana State Bobcats. A little bit of motion from the Cats here on second down. Thompson's under center. Fakes the handoff to Tyler. He's got some pressure, but he eludes the pressure. Gets across the 30. Brought down there about the 33-yard line. Josh Remington and Greg Fitzgerald in on the play. Josh Remington did a very nice job of coming off of coverage when the scramble got outside and putting a stop on Thompson. That's one of the things uh, Montana defense is concerned about, the ability of Compson to be able to elude the defensive rush and uh, make up positive yards downfield. So it's third down and six for the Montana State Bobcats. They've got three wide receivers to the short side of the field, to the near side of the field. That's Craig Galley in motion. Thompson looking to Galley, but Galley not able to catch that football. And the Montana State Bobcats will have to punt here on their first series. Well, that's exactly how the Grizzly defense wanted to open this game up, Shane, is get a big stop and not get, not let MSU get into any offensive flow. Fourth down and six. Matthew Piot back to kick for the Montana State Bobcats. Travis Walker is back to return for Montana. Walker is averaging nine yards of return so far this season. He's doing a good job for the Montana Grizzlies. Someone they can really rely on. He's got a good set of hands. Don't have to worry about any fumbles. Here's Piat with the kick. Not a great kick. Drops it about the 32. Gets a good Bobcat bounce, though, and it's going to go out of bounds at about the 12-yard line. So Montana, with not exactly spectacular field position to start off their first series of the game. But we'll see what happens. Let's talk about the starting lineups for the Montana Grizzlies on offense. Your quarterback is Brian Ayat. Your running back, Josh Brannon. Talk about the receivers, Travis Walker, Jeremy Watkins, Josh Paffhausen, and Raul Pacheco will get the start. And your linemen are Scott Curry, Randy Alec, Paul Mako, Leif Thorson, and Jason Baker. It's first down and 10 for Montana at the 12 yard line. Four wide receiver set, Ayat in the shotgun, Brannon right beside him. Paffhausen coming in motion. Ayat rolling out to his right. Looking for Justin Olsen, and he's found him at about the 26-yard line. Good enough for a first down. One of the keys for the Montana offense today will be, be uh, their ability to keep that, that tough defensive front for Montana State 
uh, away from Brian Ayat, led by Neil Smith, who has 16 sacks so far on the season. Um, what they want to do is they want to try and, and uh, keep Ayat moving with rollouts left and right so that he's not a, a still target. First and 10 for the Grizz from the 26-yard line. Ayat in the shotgun again, two wide receivers to the near side of the field, one to the far side. Ayat with a lot of time in the pocket. He flushed out, rolling to his left, gets across the 30, out of bounds at about the 31-yard line. Bobcat defense did a nice job in coverage that time. They were able to get the pressure. But I did break the pocket, and that was one of the things Coach Heist was very concerned about yesterday when we talked to him was that he thinks Brian's very effective when he gets outside the pocket and is able to create things. A five-yard pickup for Brian Ayat brings up second and five for the Grizzlies. <laughs> Three wide receivers to the far side of the field. Travis Walker to the near side. Josh Brannon in the backfield. Second and five. The handoff to Brannon right up the middle. Not much room there, and he is stopped at about the 29-yard line. It's important for Montana to uh, establish a running game as well as a passing game. Um, if they, if they rely on one or the other, it kind of takes away from their uh, two-dimensional type of uh, uh, offensive scheme. Um, gives them more options when the defense has to respect the run as well as the pass. So it's third and short for Montana. Third and one. Four wide receivers. Ayat in the shotgun. Plenty of time in the backfield. Drops it off on the left side to Josh Brannon. Looks like he may have enough for a first down. Knocked out of bounds at about the 42-yard line. Brent Millard, the inside backer for the Bobcats, did a good job of getting outside there. Just a little bit too quick from out of the backfield of the Grizzlies to stop him short of that first down. It was enough for the first down. The Grizzlies looking to probably, I think on that play, just get enough for the first down and set things up on first and 10. Three wide receiver set to the far side of the field. Ayat is in the shotgun. Travis Walker here on the near side. First and 10 from the 37. Ayat looking to his right. He's got Josh Papals and he's across the 45 to the 50. Knocked out of bounds at about the 48 yard line. The Montana State defense seems to be playing way off of the Grizzly receivers, uh, showing them a lot of respect and not allowing the big play to happen early in the game. Uh, Brian Ayat doing a good job just taking what the Bobcat defense is giving him, and the Grizzly receivers are uh, taking the ball and running with it. Bobcats brought both inside backers on that play, and, and neither one were even close to pressuring Brian. That was Coach Heiss was very concerned about when they did send people that they had to get there. So it's first and 10 for Montana at the 48-yard line. Josh Papphausen in motion. The direct snap to Josh Brannon. He's across the middle to the 40 to the 35. Brought down at about the 30-yard line by number 10, Dylan Tripp. A big gain, a nice rushing play there for the Montana Grizzlies. Josh Brannon came into the game with uh, just short of 600 yards on the season, averaging 6.5 6 yards per carry. Just the direct snap, we've seen it many times this year. It's been very effective for the Montana offense. Good to see Josh Brandon back in the lineup. He's been hampered by a neck injury the last couple of weeks, but he seems to be back at 100% today. And that run was definitely evidence of that. It's first and 10 for the Grizz from the 32-yard line. Three wide receivers to the short side of the field. Brandon goes in motion. Ayat, the quick throw to Justin Olsen. Trying to set up the middle screen, brought down at about the 28-yard line. Great play by the Montana State defense. Uh, uh, if you're going to defend against the Montana Grizzlies, that's one play that you're going to have to figure out how to defend, and they did a great job. Um, got a lot of people around Justin Olsen. A lot of people around the ball were able to bring him down for uh, a short game. A short four-yard gain for the Montana Grizzlies. Sets up second down and six from the 28-yard line. Three wide receivers to the near side. Ayat in the shotgun. Brandon right beside him. Ayat looking to his left. He's got Travis Walker coming across the middle. Down about the 26-yard line brought down there. Damon McNeil did a great job coming from the corner. Had good coverage. Just that quick passing game of the Montana Grizzlies. 
and they're going to have to take a measurement to see if he got the first down. It's awfully close to the first down marker. They'll bring the chains out. Our officials today, might as well get that out of the way. The referee is John Keyes, the umpire Richard Hall, the line judges Pink Evans and Ren Edwards, the field judge Mike Nelson, and Richard Ball. It was enough for a first down, so it's first and 10 for the Montana Grizzlies at the 22-yard line of Montana State. Montana putting together a pretty consistent drive here in their first series of the football game. Four wide receivers for the Grizz, two to the left and two to the right. Ayat is into the shotgun. Looking to his left, he's got Travis Walker out of bounds at about the 15-yard line, knocked out of bounds by Damon McNeil again. Once again, great job by uh, the Montana offense, just being patient and taking what the Montana State defense has given them. They're playing a bit of a, a deep zone, not giving away the big play to the Montana offense. And Ayat, the perfect strike to Travis Walker for a gain of about six yards. I'll tell you, there's so many great matchups on the field today. One to watch Scott Curry, the left tackle for Montana, and Neil Smith, the defensive tackle for both. Second and four, quick pitch to Josh Brandon off the left corner. Knocked out of bounds at about the seven yard line. There was Neil Smith right there, Matt. He, they just tried to option him a little bit there, and he could pull down a little bit inside and had to make the play from behind outside. Great speed by Neil Smith, 6'5", 270-pounder out of Polson, Montana. He knows all about this interstate rivalry. First down and goal for the Montana Grizzlies at the seven-yard line. Three wide receivers to the far side. Travis Walker, your single receiver to the near side. Ayat under center, first and goal. Looking across the middle, he's got Josh Pappausen. Touchdown, Grizzlies. Just like that, six to nothing, Montana. Looked like uh, there was a bit of confusion on the uh, defense by Montana State, Mo Kulbeck and Josh Perkins. It looked like they couldn't determine who should cover Pappausen. Pappausen split right between the two of them. And a great strike from Brian Ayat for the Montana score. Sometimes they make it look so easy. Chris Hepner on to attempt the point after. The snap, the kick, it's up, and it is good. So the Montana Grizzlies jumping out to a 7-0 lead here in the Montana Power Fall Classic. We're back at Reno H. Sales Stadium. The Montana Grizzlies out to a 7-0 lead over the Montana State Bobcats here in the Montana Power Fall Classic. Here's Chris Hepner with the kickoff. That's Lathy and Tyler on the return. Gets it at about his 25. Breaks a hole. He's got some room to the 35. Brought down there by Deontay Smith. But a nice return for the Montana State Bobcats. While well, we've got the chance, let's send it down to the sidelines. That's where we've got Jeff Smith, sports director from KRTV. He'll be filing reports all afternoon. Jeff. Thanks, Shane. Down here, we're just over here on the Montana sidelines, and they say that they feel like they can move the ball all day long. That 88-yard drive is something they want to keep doing, taking time off the clock and scoring points. Shane. Thank you, Jeff. Good to have you along here with us here in Bozeman. The Montana State Bobcats now first and 10 from the 35. Four wide receivers, that's Scott Harry in motion. Thompson looking to his left. That's Kenyatta Morgan back in the game for the Montana State Bobcats. He's been hampered by an injury for the last couple of weeks, but he's in there playing right now. That pass, though, was incomplete. Bring up second and 10. Kenyatta Morgan's a big play guy for the Montana State Bobcats. He comes into the game with uh, two touchdowns on 408 yards of receptions. He's an electrifying player and a guy you need to contain not only on offense, but also on special teams. He's a big time kickoff and punt returner. When we talked with Coach Heisel yesterday, he was a little bit worried about Kenyatta's effectiveness because of the injury. We'll see how much of an impact he can make. Second down and 10. Thompson faking the handoff, looking over the middle. He's got Craig Galley, and Craig Galley cannot come up with a spectacular catch. 
The ball falls incomplete. And it'll bring up third down, but you got to give credit to Galley for the effort. That was a great effort, Shane. Galley is one of the kids that Coach Heisel mentioned yesterday. has been one of the younger kids that has really stepped up, uh, replaced the receivers that went down early. Of course, they lost Chip Hobbs and Calabero early. It's really forced him to do a lot of adjustments in their offense. Craig Galley, the sophomore from Flathead High School in Kalispell. I believe that's where uh, former Montana great Grady Bennett is now coaching. I'm sure he had some positive influence on Galley. So it's third down for the Montana State Bobcats. Compson in the shotgun, two wide receivers to the near side. Compson's looking, pressured, breaks out of the pocket. Jason Crebo there brings him down at about the 35-yard line. Cats are going to have to punt. It's a great job by Jason Crebo as he's done all year. He's just such a sure tackler in the open field. Crebo coming into the game with about 90 tackles on the season so far, so he's very active for the Montana Grizzlies. Big Sky Conference defensive MVP last year. That's just one of the reasons why. Matthew Piott back to punt again for Montana State. Travis Walker is back to receive for the Grizzlies. Grizz get a little bit of pressure. Walker calls for the fair catch at the 29, and that's where Montana will take over the football here in the first quarter. We'll be back with more from the Montana Power Fall Classic right after this. Welcome back to Bozeman, folks. In the fourth quarter of today's game, John Tompkins and Robin Toner of Tyrama Service Centers of Montana will be choosing a player of the game for each team. Tyrama will award a $250 scholarship to each university in the name of the player selected. It's first and 10 for Montana at the 30-yard line. Three wide receiver formation to the near side of the field for the Grizz. Josh Brannon with the direct snap. Kind of a weird looking play there. That's a new formation. That's the bunch formation to the left with Brian Ayat as a wide receiver. Two receivers in front, Brian Ayat off the ball to the left. You'll see the direct snap to Josh Brandon. Jenkins there and at fullback. Now that's a that's a different wrinkle that we haven't seen from Montana this That is year. definitely a wrinkle we haven't seen and I'm not so sure with the success they just had on it, whether we'll see it again. <laughs> Second and 11 for the Grizz. Two wide receivers to the far side. Josh Pathhausen in motion to the near side. Ayat looking to his left. He's got Travis Walker there. A block from Pathhausen. Walker out to about the 38-yard line. Knocked out of bounds there by Kevin Lundstrom. It's a great block by Pathhausen. He almost sprung him. It seems like uh, Montana State still doing the same old soft. Two deep zone. And the Montana receiver is able to find the opening and catch the ball and make positive yardage. Got to give some credit to the Grizzly offensive line. We talked about at the beginning of the telecast that we had to get, Montana State had to get pressure and it hasn't happened yet. Third and a short two for Montana on the 38 yard line. Two wide receivers to the far side. Josh Brandon on the carry, but the Montana State defense is there. Kevin Lundstrom leading the way and Brandon did not get the first down. That was a big hit by Lundstrom. Stepped up great, moved into the hole, and put the stop on him. Great play from the junior out of Malta, Montana. So it's fourth down and one for the Grizz. And it would appear, now here comes the punt team. It looked like for a second there that the Grizz were thinking about going for it on fourth and one, but now the punt team comes on. Jake Dennehy on to punt for the Grizz. The Cats sending Bob Gary Gray and Lathian and Tyler back to receive. A little confusion for the Bobcats getting their punt return team out there. There's Dennehy with the punt. That is Ari Gray on the return. Takes it to the left side. Brought down there by Josh Remington at about the 38-yard line. No, that's the 28-yard line. My fault, folks. Looks like we've got a flag out there. Hey, Ari Gray is going to be an exciting uh, addition to this Montana State football team. Last year in, in Deer Lodge, it was a state 100, 400, and 200 meter champion. 
So he's definitely got some speed, and the Montana State Bobcats have been able to utilize that. That was a personal foul penalty, I believe, on the Montana Grizzlies. That was another thing Montana wanted to be aware of. Uh, obviously, in an interstate game like this, there's going to be a lot of emotions, but they still need to stay composed, and that was one of the things that the coaches stressed. It's good to play with emotion, but you have to play within the rules, and you have to stay composed. The light hit penalty on the Grizz gives the Cats the ball on the 44-yard line. Rob Thompson under center. Lathian Tyler in the backfield. Craig Galley coming in motion. They hand it off to Tyler. Up the middle, he's across the 45, maybe to the 46. Again, Jason Kribo did a great, great job coming from the backside. He had that one read the whole way and was able to knife through the back of the defense and get in there. Montana State offense doing a good job of trying to establish the run as well as the pass, trying to mix it up and keep that Grizzly defense off balance. The Cats looking to have a real balanced attack today. Cliff Heisel telling us yesterday that they would need to have success running the football and throwing the football if they were going to have any chance at winning. Second and eight now for the Cats. The pitch to Lathy and Tyler. He brings it to the right side. It's across the 45 to the 50. Tackled there by Jake Dennehy and Justin Gaines. Lathan Tyler is one of those running backs that's just a slasher, and it seems like the turf on that end around seemed a bit slippery, unable to get his traction going. You'll see as he comes around the corner on his plant, isn't able to quite keep his footing, and it slowed him down short of the first down. Lathy and Tyler, a redshirt freshman from Walnut, California. It'll bring up third and four for the Cats right on the 50-yard line. Hey, Reedling, this is a big play for the Bobcats. They really need to get something going offensively. Two wide receivers to the far side. Now in motion is Tony Baez. And the pass is knocked down. I believe that was 55. Eric Bueller that got a hand on it. So that'll bring up fourth down for the Bobcats, and they will be forced to punt again. You can see number 55, Eric Beeler, the big guy from Butte, Montana. Gets a hand up in the face of the quarterback, able to bat that ball down. So it's fourth down for the Bobcats. Matt Piott back to punt again, his third punt of the day. Travis Walker is back to receive for the Grizz. A good looking kick from Piott. It's going to come down at about the two but it bounces into the end zone. It's the Montana Grizzlies who will get the football on the 20-yard line on the touchback. So close for Matthew Pia. We're going to take a quick break, folks. We'll be back with more in a minute. Welcome back to Bozeman, folks. It's the 1997 Montana Power Fall Classic. The Montana Grizzlies with a 7-0 lead over the Montana State Bobcats. Just over five and a half minutes left in the first quarter of action. Guys, so far we haven't been able to see a lot of production from the Montana State offense. The Montana Grizzlies have able, were able to put seven points on the board, but the Cat defense able to step up on that last drive. First down and 10 for the Grizz on the 20. Josh Papphausen in motion for Montana. Two wide receivers to the near side. The handoff to Nate Sanders up the middle, but there's not much there. Maybe a gain of one. Jared Beakley in on the play there. Great job by the Montana State front there. They really controlled the line of scrimmage on that play. There was nowhere to go. Officials mark it as a gain of two yards for Montana. It'll bring up second and eight for the Grizzlies. Four wide receiver formation for Montana. Ayat dropping back and looking to throw, getting some pressure, and he's sacked by Neil Smith and Walter Robinson. The first time today the Bobcats are able to get pressure came from both ends. Neil Smith, who we talked about earlier, had a great year. That'll be 17 and a half sacks for him 
Also, Walter Robinson, the great story. Senior's been banged up a little bit. Coaches thought that he had the best game as a Bobcat last week. So that'll set up a third and long for Montana, third and 15. From the 15 yard line. Ayat in the shotgun, three wide receivers to the far side. Officials blow the play dead before it even starts. Maybe the play clock had expired before Ayat was able to get the snap off. And that is the call, delay of game on the Grizz. That'll set up third and 20 for Montana now. In a game of this magnitude, it's easy to get distracted and uh, sounded like the, the crowd was getting involved a little bit. Maybe Ayat got a little distracted and wasn't able to, to keep track of the play clock. So third and long just turned into third and longer for the Montana Grizzlies, third and 20. Three wide receivers again to the far side of the field. Ayat into the shotgun. He's looking, he's rolling to his right. Throwing the ball deep, Raul Pacheco has the catch, but the officials say that he was not in bounds, and the Grizz will be forced to punt. Some nice defense there by the Cats. Cats got a little bit of a break there. Number 31, Robert Carter slipped and fell down, opened up that receiver, just wasn't able to keep it in bounds. Looked like that was Justin Olson out of Helena High School trying to come back and make a play on it. Wasn't able to keep his feet in bounds. So again, go ahead. That's one of the things that the defensive staff was concerned about was when Hyatt breaks a pocket, the Grizzlies do such a great job of coming back for the ball and making things happen when it looks like there's trouble. Ari Gray, Lathy and Tyler back to receive for the Bobcats on this punt. That'll be Ari Gray taking it. Gets to the sideline, to the 50, to the 45, and knocked out of bounds. It looks at about the 44-yard line. Well, you can see the excitement that Ari Gray brings to the game when he gets the ball in his hands. You can see the speed when he takes off of the ball up the left side. A low punt like that, those are the, those are the ones you got to worry about. It doesn't allow your your punt cover team to get underneath and and defend against that punt returner. Lathy and Tyler did a good job of picking up that first Grizzly defender down there making a great block to spring him. So the Bobcats with some great field position here on this drive. They start on Montana's 44 yard line. Rob Compson is under center. That's Tony Valles in motion. That's the pass to Valles on the right side here. Gets to about the 47, 43 yard line. Not much of a gain brought down by Justin Gaines. Boy, what a great addition Viaz has been this year. He's really come up. Uh, there have only been two 200 yard games, receiving games for the Montana State in the history of Montana State and they've both been by Mr. Viaz. He's having a great year this year so far. He's got 58 catches for 920 yards and eight touchdowns. Great team pursuit that time for the Grizzlies. Tony Valles with at least one catch in 10 straight games. Make it 11 straight games. Second and nine for the Bobcats. Compson rolling out to his left. He's got a man, but the pass is incomplete. It was intended for Craig Galley. But the pass. Just, Justin Games came up and put the big hit on right when the ball was getting there. A lot of the Bobcat fans felt there should have been a flag there. It'll bring up third and nine for the Cats on the Montana 43 yard line. I'm sure Cliff Eisel and his staff really focusing on trying to get something positive out of this excellent field position that they have on this drive right here. This is the second possession where big plays and the returns have set them up in good field position so far haven't been able to capitalize. Third and nine, Thompson in the shotgun. Four wide receivers for the Bobcats. Looks to be looking over the middle. He's got his man, Kenyatta Morgan. He's at the 10. He breaks the tackle to the five. Touchdown, Bobcats. Montana State, Rob Thompson to Kenyatta Morgan. Kenyatta Morgan was doubtful for this game because of an ankle injury. But much to the excitement of the Montana State fans, he's all right, obviously. This looked like a, a nice post route over the middle. 
Jake Denny going for the ball. Kenyatta able to take it away from him. Able to make things happen, get it into the end zone. Great job by the Montana State offensive line. Looked like Compson had all day back there. A 43-yard touchdown pass from Rob Compson to Kenyatta Morgan. Makes the score 7-6. Jeff Groeschel on to attempt the extra point. It's up, and it is good. And just like that, we are tied at 7-7. Seven, seven. The Montana Power Fall Classic. Tied at seven. Here's another look at the touchdown. Just a simple post route over the middle. You can see how deep the receiver was able to get downfield, and that was uh, in due to the part of the great protection by the Montana State offensive line. Kenyatta should be going over and thanking every one of those big boys up front. That's his second touchdown. Check that, that's his third touchdown of the season. When we talked with Coach Heisel yesterday, he was a little bit concerned about Kenyatta's effectiveness today. But after that play, he's probably not as worried anymore because that was... No, I think that answered a few questions for Coach Heisel. He was concerned with his, his ability to move laterally. He felt that he could, wasn't going to have any trouble going straight ahead, but uh, making the cuts, the breaking off his routes was a real concern. He called it the shake and bake. He was That's concerned right. about the shake and bake. Mike's a defensive guy. He doesn't know anything about that shaking base. No, that's right. what I put on my chicken. <laughs> <laughs> so we're all tied up at seven apiece here in the first ever Montana Power Fall Classic. Of course, it's the 97th meeting between the Bobcats and the Grizzlies. Jeff Groeschel getting ready to kick things off here. Just over two and a half minutes left in the first quarter. Nate Sanders and Damon Parker are back to receive for Montana. Here's Groeschel with the kick. Looks like Sanders will take it five yards deep in his end zone, and he's just going to take a knee right there. And Montana will start off with the football at the 20-yard line. Boy, Groeschel sure has a powerful leg. Uh, in the meetings this morning, the Grizzlies were concerned. If, there was, if wind was a factor in this game, they were concerned if that they would even get a return, a kickoff return. Uh, Groeschel with such a strong leg, he's able the majority of the time with a little wind at his back to punch it out the end of the, in the back of the end zone, oftentimes into the crowd. So it's first and 10 for Montana on their 20 yard line. Four wide receivers, I got in the shotgun. Looks to his right. Now comes to his left, more pressure, and he's brought down again by Walter Robinson. Neil Smith also in the area. That was finally that pressure. That's what we talked about as being their key. Walter Robinson on, in on his second sack of the day, having another big game. This will be two weeks in a row for him. You might be able to call that a coverage sack as well. It looks like uh, the Montana State defensive backs had great coverage downfield, allowing that defensive front to get onto the quarterback, Brian Ayat. So it's second and 17 for the Grizzlies on their own 13-yard line. Three, three wide receivers to the far side of the field. Raul Pacheco in motion, and Brian Ayotte doesn't like what he sees. Actually, the time clock was also getting down. The play clock was, so Ayotte calls a timeout. He'll come to the sidelines, and we're actually going to head to the sidelines as well. Jeff Smith, what have you got? Thanks, Shane. Over on the Montana State sideline, things are really starting to get pumped up over there. Everybody congratulating Mr. Moore on that touchdown catch. But they said they got to keep up the def defensive pressure here on the Grizzlies. It looks like they started off that series just that way. Shane? Thanks, Jeff. When we talked with Cliff Heisel earlier in the week, he talked about keeping this game close. Wanted to get some points on the Grizz early because he knew that if they got too far ahead, it would be tough to come back. That's right, they didn't want to get, be playing catch up with the Grizzlies. Just too explosive offensively where the Bobcats are more of a controlled offense and they just haven't scored the points that the Grizzlies have. Well, right now they have scored just as many points as the Grizzlies have. It's 7-7 here in Bozeman. I tell you, with the, with the emergence of Rob Compson, the junior quarterback out of Great Falls, Montana, this Montana State offense is so explosive. Um, you know, it, in the past, they've been more of a rushing team, but this year, uh, Rob, Tom Rob Thompson has had something to say about that. Cliff Heisel in his sixth year at Montana. 
He's never beaten the Grizzlies, though. 0 oh, and 5. Four wide receiver set for Montana. Ayat, the handoff to Brandon, and Brandon has nowhere to go. Neil Smith was there, as was. It looked like uh, Alex Robinson again. Or was Alex Selix, I think, in on the tackle. The 6'2", 260-pound sophomore out of California. Big defensive tackle in there. So that'll bring up third and a long 19 yards for the Montana Grizzlies. Three wide receivers again to the far side. Travis Walker, your lone receiver to the near side. Ayat looking to his right. Got, has plenty of time. He's forced out of the pocket. He's brought down from, from behind by off the 11-yard line. That was great hustle by Neil Smith. The initial rush, he had a little, he got the double team inside and wasn't able to get there. Once he broke the pocket, he was able to come outside and chase him down from behind. Yeah, with the kind of year that Neil Smith is having, he uh, demands that type of attention. Looked like Josh Brandon was over there trying to help Scott Curry to no avail. Brings up fourth down for the Grizz, and they are forced to punt. Jake Dennehy is back to punt. Kenyatta Morgan now back to receive, as well as Eric Gray back to receive for the Bobcats. Here's the kick from Dennehy. The Cats let it bounce. It comes down at about the 46-yard line of Montana. Not a great kick from Dennehy. It's down there by Deontay Smith for Montana. So again, the Bobcats starting off with some awfully good field position. You can kind of feel the momentum turn. Uh, the first series, Montana put together such an impressive drive, um, almost completing passes at will. Uh, the last few series, Montana State's defense has stepped it up big and given their offense great field position. So it's first and ten for the Bobcats. Two wide receivers, Baez and Morgan. Thompson fakes the handoff. He's looking to go deep again. That's Baez over the middle. Justin Gaines with some nice defense, however, knocking the ball away from Baez. It's an incomplete pass. Once again, a great job by the Bobcat offensive line. He had plenty of time to throw that ball. Just looked like it hung up a little bit and gave the defense a timely break on the ball. Vaez is the kind of receiver that, the kind of receiver that can come down and make those types of catches. That's why he's had so much success this year. So it's second and ten for the Bobcats. Four wide receivers for Rob Thompson as he sets up in the shotgun. Looking to go to his right, it's a quarterback draw. But Eric Manzanera says not so fast. Brought down for a loss is Rob Thompson. Interesting story there. Eric Manzanera and Rob Thompson, former teammates up in Great Falls. They're actually real good friends in the offseason. Eric says they play a lot of golf together up in Great Falls. That is the end of the first quarter. We are tied at 7-7 here in Bozeman. We'll be back. Get ready for the second quarter as Grizzly Gridiron Classics continues. Welcome back to Bozeman, folks. Well, we've got a chance. We'd like to pass on a special thank you to our Montana's news stations across Montana for making this broadcast possible. Those, of course, are KPAX in Missoula, KAJ in Kalispell, KXLF in Butte, Bozeman, and Helena, KRTV in Great Falls, and KTVQ in Billings. It's third down and 11 for the Montana State Bobcats on the Montana 48-yard line. So we start off the second quarter of action here in Bozeman at the Montana Power Fall Classic. Pretty nice game conditions for today. A little chilly up in the booth, but it looks pretty comfortable down there on the field. I think with the <laughs> sun shining, it probably feels pretty good down there. The Cats shift their formation a little bit. Thompson moving to the shotgun, looking to his right. Intended for Scott Harry, but the pass is incomplete. It'll bring up fourth down. I believe that ball might have been tipped at the line of scrimmage. Get just, another look at it just here. Just a straight drop back. I think you're right, Mike. In fact, the left defensive end for Montana might have been Beeler there. Uh, That'd be his second knocked out of the day. So Matthew Piot into punt for the Bobcats. 
here as we start the second quarter of action. Travis Walker is back to receive for the Grizzlies. A low snap, but Piat's able to handle it. He gets the kick away. Walker takes it at about the 15, gets to about the 20. And that's where he meets a whole pack of Bobcats at about the 21. That's where Montana will take over the football. With Brian Ayat still in at quarterback. Looked like he may have gotten a little shaken up on that last sack by Neil Smith. Of course, I got injured earlier in the season in the Stephen F. Austin game. Missed their next game with St. Mary's, but came back to play in the Sacramento State game. First and 10 for the Grizz on the 22-yard line. Ayotte under center, four wide receivers. Fakes the handoff, rolls to his right. He's got Raul Pacheco. Pacheco cuts it back up the middle, gets to about the 27. That's where he's brought down by Dylan Tripp. Dylan Tripp, a strong safety out of Missoula Big Sky, senior. He leads the team in tackles this year and has been a big part of Montana State. Brian Ayala with just a little play action, trying to keep that Montana State defensive line honest. The Hawaiian connection, if you will. Great catch by Pacheco, and he gains just about six yards. Ayat and Pacheco, high school teammates at Ayalani High School in Honolulu, Hawaii. Second down and four. Three wide receivers to the far side for Ayat. He's looking to the near side, though. Has Justin Olsen, but the pass is incomplete. It'll bring up third down. Good coverage there by Noel Kubek. Look as though Kubek was there jamming Justin Olsen at the line, got just enough of him to throw off the time of that uh, Brian Ayat pass. Good defense by Noel out of Billings West. So it's third down and four for Montana on the 28-yard line. Three wide receivers to the far side. Ayat is under center. He fakes the handoff to Brandon, looking to throw. Intercepted the pass. There is a flag down. I think they're going to call Noel Kubek there. He got there just a touch too early. Pass interference is the call on the Montana State Bobcats. Great coverage by Noel Kubek. Just looked like he uh, got there a touch too early. Great athletic play by Tyson Tucker in the backfield. I'm sure Noel Kubek was pretty happy last night after watching the state championship football game for the state of Montana. Billings West defeating Bozeman. The fans in Bozeman weren't exactly happy to see uh, that game or the outcome of that game. That but was it was a, a great football that game. That was a great football game. Close all the way till the end. Tyson Tucker a little bit shaken up on that play. Probably landed on the football, may have had the wind knocked out of him. He'll step off to the sidelines. The Grizz will have the football, first and 10 on the 39 yard line. Four wide receivers for the Grizz, three to the far side and one to the near side. The single back is Josh Brannon. They fake the handoff to Brannon. Ayat looking to throw over the middle. He's got Justin Olsen wide open. He breaks the tackle down at about the 20-yard line, down to about the 18. Look like, it looked like Steve Salo, the defensive back number 25 from Montana State, was right there. The majority of the route downfield, but he seemed to have lost his footing. And uh, Brian Ayat was able to spot Justin Olsen. Brent Pease upstairs for the Grizzlies didn't take long to go after the new substitution for the Bobcats. That's right, Steve Salo into the game when Tyson Tucker went to the sidelines. So it's first and 10 for Montana on the Montana State 19 yard line. Four wide receivers, two to each side. They fake the handoff again to Brandon. Looks to Olsen over the middle, about the 19-yard line is about as far as he gets. Brought down there by Kevin Lundstrom. 
Olsen having a good game early. Uh, we've been calling his name uh, quite often. Uh, he had a shoulder injury earlier, or well, for the last few games, so we haven't seen him that often. It's nice to see him back in the lineup, doing a good job. Josh Perkins right there on the tackle, too, has been doing a good job on the corner today. So it's second and five from the 14-yard line for the Montana Grizzlies. It's all tied up at 7-7 here in the Montana Power Fall Classic. The Grizz looking to get on the scoreboard again, though. Ayat over the middle again. That pass, though, incomplete. Intended, I believe, for Raul Pacheco, which had a couple of receivers crossing the field there. I think I was a little bit hurried there. I, Neil Smith was coming hard from his left side. And we also had uh, Josh Perkins was coming on this side. Trying to bring a little heat and rattle Brian a little bit. So it'll bring up third and five for Montana. Again on the 14 yard line. Bobcats continue to go with an extra defensive back. Three wide receivers. Ayat wants to call a timeout, however. So the, the Grizz call a timeout. We'll take one as well. We'll be back in just a bit. So he's definitely one of the smarter players. Third and five for the Grizz on the 14-yard line. Ayat in the shotgun looking to his right. The screen pass to Raul Pacheco. Gets down to about the 10. Flag thrown, knocked out of bounds at about the nine. Have to see what the penalty is. Maybe an illegal block on Walker of Montana. We'll have to wait and see. See a lot of Montana State. Awfully close to the first down. I see a lot of Bobcats cheering. A holding penalty on Montana. That'll bring them back. Here's another look at the play. Can't really. It's tough to see it there. Didn't really pick up the hold. Didn't really see it there. Nice block inside. Well, lumps from there to, to free him to get to the outside. Unfortunately, someone couldn't keep their hands off the other guy's back. So instead of first and goal, it's third and about 10 for the Montana Grizzlies on the 20 yard line. Ayats in the shotgun. They send three wide receivers to the far side of the field in a formation very similar to what Grizz fans may have seen against Cal State Northridge. Josh Brandon on the handoff right up the middle to the 15, breaks the tackle at, down to about the 11 yard line. That's where Dylan Tripp brings him down. I think he's still gonna be short of the first down. It looks like it's gonna be close, maybe a yard. Good job of Josh Brandon, keeping his feet moving, keeping them churning. Able to get off the tackle to make up positive yardage. So it's fourth down and about a foot and a half for the Montana Grizzlies. And the Grizz have decided to go for it. Coach McDenahy keeping his offense on the football field. A big play here in Bozeman. Fourth and one. The handoff to Brandon up the middle. He may or may not have gotten it. It depends on how they spot the football. And it doesn't look like they got a very favorable spot. They will probably bring out the chains. Great fill again by Lunch from there, stepping up to make the play. He was there in a hurry. The 6'1", 230-pound junior out of Malta, Montana. We've said his name a number of times this afternoon, and I'm sure we'll say it a number of times down the road. Kevin's uncle, Ken Lang, also played inside backer for the Bobcats in the mid-'80s. He's out here from Seattle this weekend to take in the game. Must be in the jeans. It is short of a first down. So the Montana State Bobcats will take over. The Montana Grizzlies giving up the football on downs. It wasn't a real, a real favorable spot for the Montana Grizzlies. And the Bobcats will take over the football. Another look at the play, some great defense there. Just great gang tackling. You see Tyson, or Dylan Tripp coming in there and putting a shot on him as well. So it's first and 10 for the Bobcats now on their own 10 yard line. Two wide receivers, Morgan and Val Baez. 
Thompson is under center. He hands off to Eric Kinneman to the right side. He breaks the tackle, gets out to about the 16-yard line. Gain of about six yards. That was Josh Remington coming up from the backfield to make that play. Looks like just a sweep right with Kinneman around the right side. Good blocking by the Montana State offensive line. Able to get him out of that hole deep uh, inside their own territory. Uh, call it a gain of seven yards. Brings up second down and three for Montana State. Two wide receivers now. Galley and Baez. Thompson's under center. Kinneman is in the backfield again. That's Baez in motion. They hand off to Kinneman up the middle. Not a lot of room there. Maybe gets out to the 19-yard line. He's going to be sh just short of the first down. Looks like they've got the spot just inside the 20. Montana State likes to rotate their uh, running backs. Lathian Tyler, uh, Eric Kinneman, Travis Wright, they all get a lot of playing time. Uh, looks like it's Eric Kinneman's time this time, and he's uh, pretty effective. Came into the game with 173, 173 yards and one TD. Coach Heisel was talked about that yesterday, that they would all see quite a bit of time. A lot of that's been necessitated by the fact that each of them has been banged up over the course of the year. They brought out the chains to measure for the first down, and it is enough for a first down. So Montana State will have it first and 10 on the 19-yard line, almost the 20-yard line. Talking about those running backs, when we talked with Coach Heisel before the season began, he, he wasn't sure that any one of those three would be able to handle the football 20 to 30 times a game, but he figured rotating all three of them in, they would be able to be just as productive as three guys working as one. Thompson handing it off to Kinneman again. He's got a hole up the middle. Gets out the 25, down to the 28-yard line. Brought down there by Marcus Wilson and Josh Remington. The first time today, the Bobcats starting to have a little bit of success running the ball. This is something that was very important to offense coordinator Jim McElwain. Good job by the fullback, uh, Travis Cormany, number 36 for Montana State, 6'2", 240 pounds. He's only carried the ball one time this year, so you know when he's in the backfield, he's, uh, he's in there to do some damage for his running back. And he does a very good job of doing that damage. He was an all-Big Sky selection last year at the fullback position. Helped Matt Engelking get 1,000 yards. Second and two for the Bobcats. Kinneman again to the left side. Brought down at about the 30. Eric Manzanera is part of the tackle. Josh Remington again stepping up in the secondary, making the first contact there. Helped out by Manzanera. Manzanera's done a great job of pursuing down the line of scrimmage today. Another first down for the Bobcats. Montana having success now running the ball on this tough Montana defense. Slowly but surely working their way down the football field three or four yards at a time. First and 10 from the 30. Two wide receivers to the far side for the Bobcats. The pitch to Kinneman, the sweep to the right. He breaks across the 30 to the 35, still on his feet, and finally brought down at about the 38-yard line. Well, you got to give credit to that uh, right side of the offensive line, Josh Hausman, Denver Stairs, and the big center, Brad Callen. Just a great job Bellevue. of staying with their box there. Looked like Jason Crebo had a shot of him, made a good... Good knife, had a piece of him at the line of scrimmage, was not enough to bring him down. Bring up second down and a long one for the Montana State Bobcats. Two wide receivers, two backs in the backfield. Thompson with the long snap count. The handoff to Kinneman again to the right side. He's got a hole out to about the 50-yard line. Jake Dennehy part of the tackle. Nice tackle by Jake Dennehy, but I'm sure the Grizzly coaches don't want their free safety making the majority of their tackles on the run. Gain of about nine yards again for Kinneman. Matt, you were talking about the Montana State Bobcats starting to run the football awfully effectively. 
Yeah, they are, and that's going to pose a, a tough situation for the Montana defense. Um, uh, like I said earlier, you're obviously more effective when you're two-dimensional when the uh, when the defensive team can't concentrate on one facet rushing or passing. Here's Thompson again with the hand up to Kinnaman to the left side. He's across the 50. Justin Gaines hits him at about the 45. That's where he's knocked out of bounds. Chewing up some yards on the ground. This is what the Bobcats would like to do. They want to establish that ground game. Eric Kinnaman, just a sophomore from Sutherland, Nebraska, came into the game averaging just 17 yards a game. I think he's doubled that average already in just this drive. It's been very effective. Right now, the Montana State offense kind of predictable. Kinnaman run right, Kinnaman run left, but it seems to be working. Second and three for the Bobcats from the 45-yard line. That's Tony Baez in motion. They hand off to Kinnaman again, up the middle, across the 40, down to about the 39-yard line. Greg Fitzgerald then on the tackle. A big offensive line for Montana State, just grinding it out, creating big holes for their running back, just shoving the defensive line for the Montana Grizzlies out of the way. The offensive line has really controlled the line of scrimmage on this drive. You feel a real momentum turn here. They get the big stop on defense, and they've followed it up with a big drive offensively. When you talk about the size matchup, Montana's offensive line averages a height of 6'4 and a weight of 280 pounds. The Montana defensive line only 6'3 and 265. So they are bigger and possibly stronger. It seems to be looking that way here in the first half. Eric, uh, that's Rob Thompson rolling out to his right. He gets some pressure, brings it back up the middle, down to about the 35-yard line. You knew it was going to come. All the success Montana State was having rushing the ball. You knew the play action was going to come. They were going to try and catch the Montana defense expecting the rush. Montana defensive backs, however, were not fooled. So to bring up second and six for the Bobcats from the 35-yard line. Thompson is under center. Three backs in the backfield. In an interesting formation. They give the ball to Kinnaman again, and he's brought down quickly by Kelly Bryant. Sophomore out of Hawaii. Big Kelly Bryant, all 6'2", 295 pounds of him. Kelly does a great job of controlling his man on the line of scrimmage and then sliding off to make the tackle. So after a very successful drive that started on their own 10-yard line, the Bobcats are down on the Montana 35. Rob Thompson wants to call a timeout on third and six. Here's a look at the stats on Kinnaman. Eight rushes for 55 yards on this drive. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back in a minute. Welcome back, folks. Time for the Montana Power electrifying play of the game. It came in the first quarter. Rob Compson, the 43-yard touchdown pass to Kenyatta Morgan. And that was your Montana Power electrifying play of the game. It tied the score at seven apiece, and that is where we stand right now with six minutes and 18 seconds left in the first half. Want to share a quick NAIA playoff score with you from Butte. The Montana Tech Ore Diggers seven, Minnesota Crookson nothing. So it's third and six for the Bobcats. On the 35-yard line of Montana, the pitch to Kinnaman on the right side. He gets to about the 35, keeps on running, down to about the 29, maybe the 30-yard line. Just another sweep right for Montana State. Travis Cormany, the fullback, the big fullback. All big sky selection from last year. You can see him number 36 there, paving the way for his running back, Kinnaman. It was not enough for a first down. They're short by about, it looks like about a yard, maybe less than a yard. And the Bobcats are going to go for it on fourth and one. Just a little while ago, the Grizz failed on fourth and one. We'll see how Montana State is able to succeed on fourth and short. Thompson with a long snap count, trying to draw the Grizz off sides. There's Kinneman up the middle. The Montana defense is there. Once again, it's all going to depend on the spot. Boy, Thompson sure took a long time under the center on that one. 
Judging by the spot, I think they're going to come up a little bit short here. Great job of the Grizzly defense coming up. And first being disciplined not to jump offside on the long count and then still have the ability to come up and fill that hole. Looks like Fitzgerald and Creeble both in on the tackle. Two big names that have been uh, part of that successful defense for the University of Montana Grizzlies. So the Montana Grizzlies take over the football on the 30-yard line. Montana State giving it up on downs. 4 wide receivers for Montana on first and 10. Ayad is in the shotgun. Looks to his left. Finds Brian Gales in the flat. He's across the 35 out to about, well, they say he stepped out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Gain of about five yards. Montana State continues to go with the extra defensive back. Brian Gales is down on the field. Looks like he may have gotten hit as he went out of bounds. Let's see if we can see what happened. It looks like he was holding his hip, his right hip. Or maybe he fell, maybe he may have, looks like he may have fell on the chain there. Another look at the play. It looks like he does fall, yeah, right there on the sticks. I'm sure that's not exactly the best feeling. We're going to take a quick timeout. We'll be back and tell you how Brian Gales is doing. We're all tied up, seven apiece, Montana Power Fall Classic. We're back to action here in Bozeman. Brian Gales able to walk off the field on his own power, so it looks like he's probably okay. Looks like he's stretching it out, his, his right leg and hip area on the sidelines. Josh Brandon is back into the game. Four wide receivers for Montana on second and five from the 35-yard line. Ayat looking to his left. He's got Travis Walker. He's got the first down, and he's knocked out of bounds at about the 45. Just a, just a simple curl route by Travis Walker on the outside of that uh, Montana State soft zone. Bend but not break on that uh, one that looks like they bent just a little bit too much, allowing uh, Walker to gain that first down. Travis Walker, just a sophomore, out of Plentywood. First and 10 for Montana on the 45-yard line. They fake the handoff to Brandon. Ayat looking over the middle. He's got some pressure. He breaks out of the pocket, finds Josh Papphausen at about the 47. He's brought down there by Noel Coolback. Looks like a gain of about seven yards. Uh, yeah, just doing a good time creating, doing a good job creating time for himself. Josh Pathhausen going up high for the catch. Tell you what, when you're a receiver exposing your body, that's not an easy catch. That's a nice job of concentrating by Josh Pathhausen out of Butte, Montana. Second down and two for Montana on the 47-yard line. The quick direct snap to Josh Brandon. He's got a hole up the middle across the 40, down to about the 39-yard line. To bring a first down for the Grizzlies. That's something the Montana State defense is a little bit more susceptible to when they take out one of the inside backers to go out that inside. The, to take away the passing game, they lose a little bit of that inside pressure. Looked like Ty O'Connor. Had that one red, but uh, Josh Brennan was able to escape his grasp and gain some more yards. So it's first and 10 for Montana on the Montana State 39-yard line. Four wide receivers set. Ayat in the shotgun. Josh Brennan, 37 carries on, 37 yards on seven carries. Brennan going deep to Justin Olsen. The pass is broken up by Noel Coolback. A nice play by the Montana State defense there. A little bit of a break there for the Bobcats. I think uh, he had a step on Noel, but wasn't quite able to hold on. The Montana offensive coordinator, uh, Brent Pease, thought that Montana State was susceptible to the deep pass uh, to the wide receiver, as opposed to the slot back across the middle for the Grizzlies. And we've seen that a number of times that time to no avail, but it's going to keep the Montana State defense honest. So it's second down and 10 for the Montana Grizzlies. Raul Pacheco in motion for Montana. Ayad is in the shotgun. Looks to his left, overthrows Justin Olsen, and it's almost
almost intercepted by Damon McNeil. McNeil able to get a hand on it, but the pass is incomplete. Boy, just a good job by Damon McNeil reading that uh, little in route. Let's head on down to the sidelines. Jeff Smith with an injury report. That's right. We uh, talked with the assistant trainer, J.C. Weida, here on the Montana sidelines, and it appears that there was just a contusion. He ran to the uh, sideline marker, marking the down marker there, and uh, has a contusion on his gluteus. <laughs> Shane? That's the technical term right there. Third and ten for the Montana Grizzlies on the 39-yard line. Ayat rolling to his left. He's got some time. He's got a man. He's found Travis Walker at the 28. 28 yard line. Dylan Tripp uh, introducing himself to Travis Walker. Defensive coaches from Montana State describe Dylan Tripp as a real headhunter. He's out there to make the big hit. It's enough for the first down for the Montana Grizzlies, however, on the 28 yard line. It'll be first and 10. Dylan Tripp came into the game with 124 tackles leading Montana State, so he's very active. Travis Walker, four catches for 32 yards here in the first half. I got the handoff to Brandon on the draw. Gets about to the 25, down to maybe the 24. Gain of about three, four yards. Montana's got a nice mixture of running backs. Uh, Josh Brandon, more of the pounder up the middle. Stay low, really strong runner. Then you've got Gales on the outside and bring in Nate Sanders. Uh, they're doing a great job this year. Bring up second and seven for the Grizzlies. Three wide receivers to the near side of the field. Ayad is in the shotgun. The shovel pass to Brandon. He's across the 20 to the 15, down at about the 10 yard line. Ken Amato, Ken Amato with the tackle there but not before Brandon's brought down at about the 10. It was great blocking for the Grizzlies that time. I believe it was Curry that was able to ride Amato out to the outside and allow that play to come back in. So it'll be first and goal for the Montana Grizzlies from the 10 yard line. We're all tied up at 7-7, three minutes, 26 seconds left here in the first half. Ayat is under center. He hands off to Brandon, up the middle. Brandon's got some room, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Grizzlies. Josh Brandon, a 10-yard touchdown run. Just a big run on the right side of the Montana offensive line. Big Jason Baker, the All-American candidate for Montana creating a huge hole for Josh Brandon. Looked like Chase Raynock also in there. Josh Brandon wa walks into the end zone. Touchdown, Montana. We talked with Josh earlier in the week. He's from Moscow, Idaho, but he knows how big this football game is to fans in Montana. He says he's feeling more and more like a Montanan. Every day he's here. And he's just trying to do his part. That's Chris Hefner with the extra point, giving Montana a 14-7 lead. That's Josh's seventh touchdown of the season. Josh Brandon with nine carries for 53 yards and a touchdown here in the first half. More importantly, his touchdown gave Montana a 14-7 lead here in the first half with three minutes and 17 seconds remaining in the first half. After that first drive with a quick score by the Montana Grizzlies, I would never guess we'd have waited this long to see them get in the end zone again. I think uh, the Bobcat fans would have normally been happy to get pulled down to 14 in the first half, but I think they're a little disappointed with their own offensive production. The Bobcats will get the football back with just over three minutes left here in the first half. Have to see how the offense is able to produce with a limited amount of time. Chris Hepner on to kick off for the Montana Grizzlies. Out of Great Falls. The sophomore. The kick is deep. It takes Ari Gray about seven yards back into the end zone, and he's just going to take a knee right there. So Montana State will start off with the football on the 20-yard line. 
we talked about Jeff Rochelle from Montana State having a strong leg. Well, we've got a pretty, uh, Mon University of Montana has a pretty good uh, kicker in Hepner also. Chris Hepner kicking a 54-yard field goal against Idaho State down in Pocatello earlier in the year. And when they played in Wyoming, he was able to kick the football actually out of the stadium. It went through the end zone and into the uh, bleachers on the end zone. First and 10 for Montana State on the 20-yard line. That's the handoff to Kinneman again, up the middle, out to about the 26. Gain of about five, maybe six yards. As the clock continues to wind down here in the first half, three minutes now remaining. Right now it seems like time is uh, going to be a factor on this drive. Montana State trying to get another score. Only two minutes and 45 seconds left. They're having success with the run, but every time you run the ball, the clock's going to continue to run. And so uh, it's, uh, it's an interesting dilemma they have. Second and five for the Bobcats. Comps in the pitch to Kinneman to the right side. He's across the 25 down to about the 26, 27 yard line. It'll bring up third down. He did not get out of bounds, so the clock continues to run. Just over two minutes and 15 seconds now left in the first half. Nice open field tackle there by the cornerback, Chris Colvin. Chris Colvin coming off a big game against Weber State last week. Two interceptions in that game. In fact, he was the Big Sky Conference, one of the Big Sky Conference's defensive players of the week. So it's third and three for Montana State on the 27-yard line. Thompson is in the shotgun. Scott Harry is in form in, in motion, I should say. They throw to Harry. He gets across the 30, brings down a couple of tacklers with him. Jason Prebo, Justin Gaines, out to about the 33. Should be enough for a first down. Tell you what, a lot of basketball fans from Montana State may remember the name Harry. Uh, he actually is a, a two-sport starter. Uh, the first two-sport starter in Montana State history. Surprised we haven't called his name a little earlier today. I know that the offensive staff really wanted to get the ball to him today. First and 10 for the Bobcats on the 33-yard line. Just, over a just under a minute and a half left. They throw to Harry again, Thompson does. He gets out to about the 40. Gain of about maybe six yards. Harry came into the game with 26 catches for right around 300 yards. He does a nice job complimenting the running game. They run a lot of play action, and they run Harry on a lot of short routes. Good hands, very reliable. The Bobcats coming up to the line of scrimmage quickly. Second and three from the 40. Thompson dropping back, getting some pressure. That's J Greg Fitzgerald, and Thompson is down at about the 29-yard line. Big play there by Mr. Fitzgerald. That was great coverage in the Grizzlies secondary there. There was just, Thompson had a little bit of time. There was just no one to throw to. Had to eat it. So from second and three, it's now third and about 13 for the Bobcats. Montana wants to take a timeout, stopping the clock with 56 seconds left here in the first half. Talk a little bit about Greg Fitzgerald, the senior from Columbus. Playing in the shadows of former Grizzly linebackers like Mike Boucher and David Sermon, he finally got his chance to start this year and he's made the most of it. He's got four interceptions on the year, three of them coming against Cal State Northridge. He's been a very vital part of this Montana defense. Of course, Rob Thompson, you see who you see there, has been a vital part of the Montana State offense this year. Grizzlies using that timeout here. Stop the clock so they can have some time when they do get the ball back. It's third and long for Montana State. Third and 13 on their own 30-yard line. Montana going with their nickel defensive package. That means they take out a linebacker and they substitute a defensive back during passing situations. So here we go, 56 seconds left in the first half. Third and 13 for the Cats on their own 30-yard line. Two wide receivers to the near side of the field. Thompson fakes the handoff. 
He's looking to his right. He's pressured again. And this is going to be another. The play is ruled dead. I believe they're going to call that a sack. Tyler Martin was one of the Grizzlies there on the play. As was Eric Manzanares. Just a big pile of blue and gold and maroon and silver there. Sets up fourth and 20. So Matthew Piot is in to punt for the Bobcats. 16 seconds, 15 seconds now left in the first half. This could possibly be the last play of the first half. Travis Walker is back to receive for the Grizz. He takes it at his own 40, gets to the 45. He's brought down there with one second remaining on the clock. So the Grizz will get one last play in before we head to halftime. That's Ari Gray once again, the speedster out of Deer Lodge, making a nice play on the special teams. Helping out on both offense and defense. You have somebody that fast, you want to have them on the field. We'll see if we can uh, determine whether or not Montana will go for the Hail Mary pass. They've got three wide receivers to the far side of the field. Ayata's in the shotgun. He's looking to his right, and he's looking to throw deep. Penalty flag on the play. There's a flag down. The pass drops incomplete. Tyson Tucker is back there, as were about three or four Montana Grizzlies. There's a flag down, though, and we'll see what the penalty is. Of course, the half can't end on a defensive penalty. Sounds like the Bobcats may have had a, an extra man out there. Good strategy, but not too effective uh, <laughs> when they get the flag out. Want to try to get that little advantage. Sneak the extra man in, but the officials caught it. So there's officially no time on the clock. They may be in Hefner's range here. Would be about a, well, would be a long one. A little bit of wind at his back. He could take a shot at it. Referee John Key's having a little trouble with his mic today. So this will be the last play of the first half, pending another penalty, of course. Montana has the ball on the 40-yard line. And the offense is still out on the field, so they're going to go for it with their offense. Three wide receivers to the far side. Ayats in the shotgun again. He's got some time. He's looking to go long. Comes to the near side. That's Pacheco down there. And Pacheco comes up with the football. Touchdown, Grizzlies. What a great job of Raul Pacheco. Trip, Montana State's trip was right there with him. It was a jump ball situation. Either one of them could have came up with it. Raul got just a little bit higher. Touchdown, Montana. Very rarely does the Hail Mary play work, but here it did. There's no time left on the clock. Montana going 40 yards in one play. Brian Ayat to Raul Pacheco, the Hawaiian connection, and it's good for six points. Montana out to a 20 to seven lead. It's a real emotional heartbreak for the Bobcats there to do that on the last play of the half. Takes your steam out when you're going into the locker room. Chris Hefner's extra point attempt is up and good. So that is the end of the first half. Montana striking quickly at the end of the half. Raul Pacheco, a 40-yard touchdown reception, gives the Montana Grizzlies a 21-7 lead at halftime. We'll be back with halftime festivities right after this. The second half of Grizzly Gridiron Classics starts now. Welcome back to Bozeman, folks. We're at halftime of the Montana Power Fall Classic. The Montana Grizzlies with a 21-7 lead over the Montana State Bobcats. It's been a big weekend down here in Bozeman, a big Montana Power Fall Classic weekend. The two volleyball teams in action last night over at Schroyer Gym here in Bozeman. And it was the Montana Lady Grizz in a must-win situation. They had to win last night to have any chance at getting into the Big Sky Conference postseason tournament. 
and the Montana Lady Grizz were able to come away with a five-game win. They won three games to two over the Montana State Bobcats, 15 to 13 in the final game. And then the team got some spectacular news after the game. They found out that Weber State had lost. So the Montana Lady Grizz are headed to the Big Sky Conference Tournament next weekend. Of course, the Montana State Bobcats had already qualified for that tournament. They will go in as the fourth seed. Montana will go in as the sixth seed. Here is game point from the match. Sarah Parsons had the kill. Karen Weiler's block sailed just long off the end line. And there's the celebration. Dick Scott getting his 501st career win. Of course, you can catch action from that game tomorrow in Missoula and Kalispell on KPAX and KAJ. That game will be on at 2 o'clock in Butte and Bozeman on KXLF. You can see that game at noon. So if you want to catch the action from last night's volleyball game, you can watch KXLF in Butte and Bozeman at noon or catch it on in Missoula and Kalispell at 2 o'clock on KPAX and KAJ. We're about ready to start the second half of action here in Bozeman. There is Montana head coach Mick Dennehy in his second year at the helm of the Montana Grizzlies. He has never lost to the Bobcats as a head coach. He is 1-0. Cliff Heisel has never beaten the Grizzlies. He is 0-5 in his sixth year at Montana State. But he has been able to do some great things in the last couple of years, they put together back-to-back -to -back winning seasons for the first time since 1979, the first time si since the school has gone into the Division I AA area of the NCAAs. So Cliff Heisel is doing some good things, but I'm sure he's still feeling the pressure of, of having not beating the Grizzlies yet. Right. When he talked to us yesterday, Shane, he made it very clear that so they had accomplished a couple goals this year, the five wins in conference and the back-to-back -back winning seasons that all their goals have not yet been fulfilled. And that this Grizzly game was one that meant a lot of both him and the players. And so far, they just haven't gotten the job done, but uh, the second half could be promising. That is true. There is a lot of football left to be played. 30 minutes of football left to be played. The Montana Grizzlies will receive here as we start the third quarter of action, Damon Parker and Nate Sanders are back to receive for Montana. Jeff Brochelle will kick off for the Montana State Bobcats. Good looking crowd here in Bozeman as they start to come back from the tailgating festivities. A capacity crowd, it was a sellout for, oh, a good two or three weeks before the game actually came about so this game of course is always a sellout though when you when the Bobcats and the Grizzlies meet always so let's get the third quarter started Jeff Rochelle with the kick it's a short kick Damon Parker's able to come up with it on the 10 he's across the 20 he's got a hole up the middle in fact he breaks it to the outside back up the middle again then he fumbles the football at the 40 and the Montana State Bobcats have recovered so what looked like a great play for the Grizz turned into a nightmare, and the Bobcats take over on the Montana 40-yard line. Well, emotionally, I think that's a great lift for the Bobcats coming out after the bad play. To the end of the first half, this could really help them get back in it. You see here, here, the ball's just pulled loose, as it so often is when you're going for those extra yards. It looks like Kulbeck getting congratulated on the Montana State sideline for the strip. So Montana State has the football on the Montana 40-yard line. Ryan Comps, Rob Compson, I'm sorry, under center. The pitch to Kinneman. He's across the 40, down to about the 36-yard line. Uh, like we said uh, at halftime, prior to halftime, uh, you know, they had so much success with Kinneman. It seemed like because of time constraints, the end of the first half, they had to go a little bit back to the pass, but uh, Montana State now trying to reestablish the running game that they uh, had established early in the second quarter with Kinneman. Kinneman 14 carries 66 yards on the day so far. It's a great linebacker play on that last play. Krebo rides out the sweep and is able to get there. And Fitzgerald had great chase from the backside. Second down and seven for the Bobcats on the 36-yard line. 
They run the reverse to Tony Baez. He's at the 40. He's looking for a block from Compson. Gets uh, out of bounds at about the 31-yard line. We'll be short of a first down, or close to a first down, actually. This is a good strategy for Montana State, trying to get the ball to one of their most uh, productive players on the Montana State offense, Vaez. Uh, we talked about him having 200, two 200-yard 200 receiving games this year. Uh, so far today, I think he only has one reception, so it's good to get him involved in the game. Uh, hopefully he can create something for Montana State. It's third and one for the Bobcats on the 30-yard line. A shift in formation. Eric Kinneman is in the backfield. The pitch is to Kinneman. He gets across the 30. He's still on his feet, knocked out of bounds at about the 27. But that's enough for a first down for the Cats. See the Bobcats shift there. They really loaded up that left side. No uh, mystery there is what they were going to try and do. They were just lucky enough to get out, just get on the corner a little bit, get the first down. It is enough for a first down, first and 10 for Montana State on the 26-yard line. Eric Kinneman, the sophomore out of Nebraska, stepping in today and making a real big impact. He's in the backfield. Two wide receivers for the Bobcats. Thompson under center. First and 10 from the 26-yard line. The handoff to Kinneman up the middle. He's got a hold out of the 20. Dragged down there by Marcus Wilson, but not after he, not until he gained about six yards. Well, that was a touchdown saving tackle by Marcus Wilson. Kinneman just a uh, little run right up the middle. A nice cut back. Tell you what, there was nothing but uh, the end zone left if uh, Marcus Wilson isn't there to bring him down. Second down and three now for the Cats on the 20 yard line. Thompson, again, the handoff to Kinneman. The Montana defense is there this time, not much of a gain. Marcus Wilson, Jason Crebo around the football. Marcus Wilson making back-to-back -back big plays for this defense. Grizzlies done a good job when the Bobcats have got a, this position on the field. They've shut him down and kept him out of the end zone here. Montana State's been able to move the ball effectively, but it seems like when they get into the red zone, they call that, when they get inside their opponent's 20-yard line, they seem to uh, not be as effective. Third down and four now for the Bobcats on the 21-yard line. A big third down play here for Montana State. Thompson, the play action, rolling to his life. left. He's got right. He's going to keep the football. Gets across the 15, down to about the 14-yard line. Should be enough for a first down. In fact, it is a first down. Montana State keeping the drive alive. Just when the uh, Montana defense thinks they have Thompson contained. He's able to scramble upfield. That's that uh, additional dimension that Thompson brings to the game. Keeps the defense honest. It's, it's really tough to defend against a scrambling quarterback. Uh, you can defend against the pass, and, and, and when you do that, the scrambling quarterback can still make up yardage by running the ball. Thompson with 225 rushing yards this season. First and 10 on the 15-yard line for the Bobcats. The handoff to Kinneman up the middle. He's got a hole. He breaks the tackle. He's into the end zone. Touchdown. Eric Kinneman, 15 yards, right up the gut. And the Bobcats are right back in this football game. Great job by the offensive line for the Bobcats, opening up this hole in the middle. They free him up to the linebacker. Josh Remington has a shot at him, can't quite bring him down, and he's in the end zone. Exactly what the Bobcats needed to get back in this game was they capitalized off that first turnover on the kickoff. Kinneman's second touchdown of the season. The extra point attempt from Jeff Rochelle is no good. So it's 21 to 13 now. Montana with an eight point lead over Montana State here in the Montana Power Fall Classic. We'll be back in a minute.
Welcome back to Bozeman. Jeff Groeschel with the missed extra point attempt for Montana State. And Mike, when we talked with Cliff Heisel earlier yesterday, actually, he was he told me that it's been kind of a tough a tough thing with the kicking game this year. Right. They, you know, people take those PATs for granted and think it's an automatic thing, but it's really hurt the Bobcats this year. They had a, a missed pay, PAT against Southwest Texas that forced them to go for two later in the game and again against Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. So it's really been costly for them throughout the course of the season, and once again today, it's put them in a real problem area. We'll see what happens. The Bobcats now trailing 21-13 in the third quarter. Groeschel's kick goes about five yards deep into the end zone. The Grizz are just going to take a knee. That's Brian Gales receiving the kick, but Montana will take over the football on the 20-yard line. I'll tell you what, Eric Kinneman for uh, Montana State, who just scored the touchdown. He's not a big guy, only five foot eight, 175 pounds, but he plays much bigger than he is. Uh, able to run hard up the middle, breaking tackles, and uh, able to have enough speed around the edge to uh, make up positive yardage also. So you see the scoring drive, eight plays, 40 yards, wrapping up with a 14-yard touchdown run from Eric Kinneman. Brian Ayotte now in the shotgun, throws it out in the flat to Josh Brand, and Puts on a second head of steam, gets about to the 27 yard line. Where he's knocked out of bounds by Damon McNeil. It's one of those plays that the Grizzlies run so much of where they throw the ball short or even short of the line of scrimmage and force the defense to really tackle well. Bob gets had a little trouble with that in the second half last year against the Grizzlies, and Coach Heisel emphasized to us yesterday that he really felt it was important that they tackle well and keep the ball in front of them. Gain of about eight yards for Montana to bring up second and two from the 28-yard line. Justin Olsen in motion for the Grizz. The direct snap to Josh Brandon. He takes it up the middle across the 30, maybe to the 31. Probably enough for a first down. It is enough. We get the signal from the official. Go ahead. Paul Mako, the center out of Missoula Hellgate, is doing a nice job snapping that ball. You, know, you kind of take for granted, and you see the the running back catching the ball, but that's got to be a difficult snap. It's not directly to the to the quarterback. It's off to the running back, and uh, Paul's doing a great job. First and ten for Montana on the 31-yard line. Five wide receivers now in the set. The quick pass to Josh Papaus, and he's across the 35, gets out of bounds at about the 40-yard line. Dylan Tripp knocking him out of bounds, but not before he gained close to nine, maybe ten yards. Looks like it's going to be short of the first down, so it's about nine yards. See here, something the Grizzlies do so well. They've got all these guys walled off out here. Three defenders walled off. Just give the, the receiver a chance to make a break. Billy Cockhill, the, the wide receivers coach for Montana, does a great job teaching the wide receivers not only to catch the ball and run good routes, but also to block downfield on running plays. So it's second and one for Montana on the 41-yard line. Again, no, no back in the backfield. Brian Ayotte, the quick quarterback, draw up the middle. It's enough for the first down. Montana moving the chains once again. Play action by the Montana Grizzly offense. Justin Olsen going down, catching a difficult ball across the middle. got an update for you real quickly on the NAIA play playoff game. Montana Tech 31 to 10 over Minnesota Cookson at halftime. Second down and three for the Grizz. Josh Brandon with the run up the middle. He's across the 40 to down to about the 38 yard line. Tyson Tucker making the stop but not before Montana gets another first down. Josh Brandon did a great job there of finding this little seam here. Great body control by Josh Brandon also. Uh, a number of other backs would have gone down on that cut. Seemed to have lost his balance and was able to regain it. Gain an extra 10 yards on the play. Seems like his feet just never stop moving. There you see the numbers for Mr. Brandon. 13 carries, 65 yards, and a touchdown so far here today in Bozeman. Montana with the football. First and 10 on the Montana State 38-yard line. Three wide receivers. Ayat under center looking to go to his right, Justin Olsen, the pass incomplete. Tyson Tucker and Noel Kulbeck on the defense. Again, Noel Kulbeck doing an excellent job in coverage. Tyson Tucker coming over from the free safety position to help him out on that one. Wow, looks like that ball actually hit our cameraman. That was some of that up close and personal action. 
for you here in Bozeman this afternoon. Sets up though second and 10, the end completion does. Second and 10 on the 38 yard line. Four wide receivers. Raul Pacheco now in motion. They fake the snap handoff to Brandon. They throw to Raul Pacheco, but the pass is incomplete. Looks like Montana was uh, trying to set up the middle screen there, anticipating maybe a, a blitz or some pressure defense from Montana State. Josh per Perkins, the uh, sophomore defensive back out of Long Beach, California, did a good job reading it. Josh Perkins seeing a lot of time today as MSU's nickelback, trying to prevent this grizzly passing game from picking up too many yards over the top. Sets up third and 10 for Montana on the 38 yard line. Pacheco again in motion. Three wide receivers to the far side. They set up the middle screen again. Pacheco, his knee hits the ground at the 43 yard line and that's where he's brought down. To set up fourth down for Montana. We said it was a nice day, but uh, it was a cold night, and uh, it takes a while for that turf to thaw out. Uh, Raul Pacheco unable to maintain his footing on this slippery turf, and the Montana State Bobcats are able to get the ball back. So the Grizz are forced to punt. Harry Gray is back to receive for the Bobcats. Jake Dennehy with the kick. Gray lets it bounce, and it bounces into the end zone before Montana can get a hand on it. So Montana State will take over the football on their own 20-yard line, trailing 21 to 13 in the third quarter of the Montana Power Fall Classic. Before the kickoff of today's game, Ian Davidson presented the D.A. Davidson Scholar Athletes of the Year Award. Mr. Davidson presented both universities $1,000 each to go towards their scholarship funds. D.A. Davidson has been presenting this award for me a many number of years. This year's recipients are running back Josh Brannon of the University of Montana. Josh is from Moscow, Idaho, and has a four-point grade point average in pre-physical therapy. And for Montana State University, center Brad Callen won the award. Brad has a 3.71 grade point average in exercise science and is from Bellevue. Congratulations to Josh and Brad. First and 10 on the 20 for the Bobcats. They fake the reverse. Eric Kinneman on the carry. Gets to about the 25-yard line. It's knocked out of bounds there after a five-yard gain. Oh, Montana State just uh, with a sweep left with Kinneman. They've had a lot of success. Um, and why change something if it keeps working? Uh, they're just going to keep on grinding it out with Kinneman and getting positive yardage. Second and five for the Bobcats on their own 25-yard line, just short of the 25, actually. Eight minutes, 45 seconds left here in the third quarter. Thompson in the shotgun. Scott Harry is in motion. Thompson's rolling to his right, then comes back to his left, finds Kenyatta Morgan. He's got a couple of blocks. He's across the 30 to the 35, and he's brought down there at about the 38-yard line. Greg Fitzgerald in on the stop. Bit of a misdirection play for the Bobcats. You'll see Thompson roll out right, try and get the flow of the Grizzly defense to go that direction, and he comes back and throws the screen pass to Kenyatta Morgan. Good job of Morgan. Getting the necessary yardage upfield. First down, Montana State. It's first down and 10 for the Bobcats on the 38-yard line. Three wide receivers now for Montana State. That's Craig Galley in motion. They hand off to Travis Wright, who's in the football game now for Montana State. Not much of a gain there, though. Maybe one yard. It'll bring up second and long. Once again, Marcus Wilson stepping up from his linebacker spot to fill that hole in the run. We talked about Montana State using a trio of back of running backs, and we've seen Lathy and Tyler. We've seen Eric Kinneman, and there we just saw Travis Wright. But Kinneman now coming back in from the sidelines on second and 10 from the 38-yard line. Marcus Wilson getting some wardrobe work done there by the official. 
The pitch is to Kinneman. Almost brought down in the backfield by Eric Beeler. But Marcus Wilson's there to make the stop. A loss of probably about a yard. It'll bring up third and long for Montana State. Well, they continue to go with that sweep that time. Marcus Wilson did a good job of getting up underneath the blocking, was able to knife up through and make the tackle for a loss. Butte's Eric Beeler does a great job containing the play, uh, making Kinnaman cut inside so that the pursuit was able to track him down. It's third and 11 for Montana State. On the 37-yard line, Thompson is in the shotgun. There's four wide receivers for the Cats. Thompson looking to go to his left. Craig Galley's there, but the ball overthrown, incomplete, and the Cats will be forced to punt. Well, Montana State trying to mix it up. They've had success running the ball. Uh, I guess the University of Montana has made some good adjustments uh, from the first half, and they were able to contain that uh, potent running attack of Montana State. They're going to be able to get the ball back here with about 6.45 left in the third quarter. Piot back to punt for Montana State. Damon Parker and Travis Walker are back to receive for the Grizzlies. Piot with a low angling kick. Walker takes it on the run at the 35. He's brought down, though, at about the 37. Looked like Kinemoto on the tackle. Some nice special teams play here by the Bobcats. Kinemoto also plays that outside linebacker spot for the Bobcats. Has done a good job when he's been in there as well. Let's go downstairs down to the sidelines and Jeff Smith. Thanks, Shannon. I don't know if things are warm up there, but they're nice and warm down here with the Montana State cheerleaders. Mara, is this a big uh, big rivalry? Is it a big rivalry between the cheerleaders as well? No. Actually, we're very supportive of each other, and it's a lot of fun, but we are number one. All right. Back upstairs, Shane. Brian Ayotte getting pressure in the backfield, and he's brought down at about the 25-yard line. Some nice pressure there by Montana State. Well, again, that's their All-American candidate, Neil Smith. He's had a tremendous year. You see, makes a strong, hard rush here. <laughs> Looks like he's getting, uh, may have had a little holding there that didn't get called, too. He was dragging one guy with him while he was going after the quarterback. Great effort. Walter Robinson coming in to help out at the end of the play. It'll bring up second in a very long 21 yards for Montana, back on their own 26-yard line. Four wide receivers, three to the near side of the field for Montana. Ayats in the shotgun. Looking over the middle. Intended for Josh Pappausen, but it's broken up by Josh Perkins. Montana State's playing a two deep zone, so Montana wanted to try and have every receiver, all four of them, run verticals. So that way, they outnumber the coverage on top, four receivers to two defensive backs, but it was great under coverage by Josh Perkins, able to get a hand on that and knock it down, incomplete. So it's now third down and 21 for the Montana Grizzlies on their own 26 yard line. Again, four wide receivers, three to the near side of the field for Montana. Ayat pressured in the backfield, escapes the pressure and gets rid of the football. They rule the catch incomplete. Travis Walker made the catch, but he was out of bounds. Well, we talked about it all day. The Bobcats have success on defense when they get pressure up front. That time, Neil Smith made a strong upfield move, made a spin to the inside, and was able to hurry the throw. So the Grizzlies now forced to punt. The Montana State defense coming up with a big stop. Jake Dennehy in to punt for Montana. Kenyatta Morgan and Ari Gray back to receive for the Cats. Here's Dennehy's punt. A good kick, a booming kick. Comes down on the 20, gets a, a grizzly roll, still rolling down to about the six yard line. That's where Deontay Smith will cover it up and Montana State will take over the football on their own six yard line in the shadow of their own goal post. Jake Denny, prototype punter, but he sure is effective. 
That is for sure. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with more in a minute. Welcome back to Bozeman, folks. The Montana Grizzlies with a 21-13 lead here in the third quarter of the Montana Power Fall Classic. Just over five minutes remaining here in the third quarter. Montana able to pin the Bobcats back in the shadow of their own end zone after a great punt from Jake Dennehy in a very favorable roll. So Montana State will take over the football now on their own six yard line, first and 10. Rob Thompson is under center. He hands the football off to Eric Kinneman. He's brought down in the backfield by the senior, Jason Prebo. One thing we haven't seen today is much pressure from the linebackers uh, of either team, the Grizz or the Cats. Here, Jason Crebo comes flying in on a blitz. He will catch Kinneman behind the line of scrimmage for a loss. So it's second down and 10 now for the Bobcats. Still on their own six yard line. Looks like two wide receivers to the near side of the field. Craig Galley now in motion. They hand the ball off again to Eric Kinneman. Gets maybe a yard out to about the seven yard line. Montana defense coming into the hole there and making the play. Great job again by Jason Crebo. Coming up and filling the gap there. Jason Crebo, Andy Pedic, just one of several Grizzlies there to make part of the tackle. This great field position for Montana, all because of a Fantastic punt by Jake Dennehy. They will pin Montana State inside the five yard line. Third down and nine now for the Bobcats. Three wide receivers. A shift in formation. Thompson fakes the handoff. Looking to throw over the middle. Looking for Tony Baez. The ball knocked away by Justin Gaines and Josh Remington. Montana State fans looking for maybe a pass interference penalty, but they will not get one. And the Bobcats are forced to punt. Play action by Montana State. Compton, Compton trying to go up top to his main man, Vaez. Justin Gaines there, read it the whole way, able to bat it down. Good play by Gaines. So Piat's back to punt for Montana State. Damon Parker, Travis Walker back to receive for the Grizzlies. Good booming kick from Piat. Takes Walker back to the 45. He's across the 50, knocked out of bounds by Dylan Tripp at about the 49 yard line. Let's go back downstairs, down to the sidelines, and Jeff Smith. Thank you, Shane. Well, with Coach Mick Denny, he gathered the offense together after that last series. Not at all happy with the way things were going and said, and said in typical Mick Denny fashion, no excuses, get it done. We'll see how they respond in this series. Shane? That will be interesting to see indeed. As Montana has some pretty good field position here. Here on the 50-yard line, first and 10, three minutes, 42 seconds left here in the third quarter. Four wide receivers, three to the right, or three to the left side. Ayat in the shotgun. Rolling to his left, the shovel pass to Brandon again. He's brought down in the backfield by Ty O'Connor. Great play by Ty there. He's able to get off the block. Number 79, Lee Thorson, to just make the tackle. It looks we've got somebody dead. Brandon down again. Yeah, looks like Josh, Josh Brandon's hurt. The uh, Grizzly training staff and head coach Mick Dennehy out to see just what exactly happened to Josh. A little bit of a twisting tackle here. I think he grabs the inside and gets twisted a little bit back inside there. And, Number 90, Walter Robinson comes down on top. That may have been the problem. Looks like he may have fallen on his left shoulder. He did have a stinger in his neck a couple of weeks ago. Kept him out of action in the Portland State game and the Weber State game. Right now he's laying down on the football field. But he's grabbing his helmet and he's moving around. 
Looks like it's the left ankle. Yeah, it looks like it is the ankle. Josh going to be helped off the field by the trainers. We'll have to see how he is doing. Montana now with second and 10, though, on the 50-yard line. Four wide receivers. Brian Gales into the game now to replace Brannon. Ayat with some time looking to his left. He's got a man. That's Jim Ferris. They're going to mark him down at about the 44-yard line. Kind of interesting on that play. He actually left his feet at about the 48, but he didn't come down until the 46, and that's where they mark him. Good job coming back to the ball. Good defense by Montana State. But Ferris able to beat the defender to the ball and gain some positive yardage. Six-yard gain for Montana. It'll set up third and four from the Montana State 44-yard line. Four wide receivers. Ayat under center this time. Looking to throw the quick pass to Jim Ferris over the middle. He's got some room to the 30, to the 20. Brought down at about the 15-yard line. A game-saving tackle, a touchdown-saving tackle from Noel Kulbeck. But well, Ferris sure has some speed. We saw it against Portland State. He caught uh, the longest reception in Montana history, over 90 yards. Just a quick little slant route. Get the ball to him quick. And he does the rest on his own. It's first and 10 for Montana on the 14-yard line of Montana State. Jim Ferris, just a freshman, had 228 receiving yards coming into the game, three touchdowns. Here's Ayat looking to throw again. The screen to Brian Gales. It's incomplete to bring up second and 10. Mike, there were a lot of Bobcats around that play as well. Yeah, there were. They, got, they brought trips out here to the near side of the field and went tried to go back to the single receiver side. Bobcats weren't fooled. They were able to get in there and put some pressure and make the play. Set up second down and 10 on the 14-yard line. Just over two minutes left here in the third quarter. Four wide receivers for Montana. Ayat looking to his left, looking to the end zone. The ball caught by Jim Ferris, but he's out of bounds. So Montana State comes away with a break there. He really did. Dan McNeil on the coverage, pretty good coverage, but Ferris just makes a great effort on the ball. You'll see here. Dan McNeil right there, good coverage. Makes a great effort, goes up, just can't quite keep it in bounds. Looked like it was just on the end line, close. Yeah, it looked like his toe may have come down on that line. The closest, close only counts in horseshoes. Not in touchdowns. Third and 10 for the Grizzlies on the 14 yard line. They lead 21 to 13 here in the Montana Power Fall Classic. Ayat in the shotgun. Looking to run now, getting some pressure. Brought down in the backfield by Josh Perkins. About, brought down at about the 20-yard line. Well, that's a huge defensive play for the Bobcats. Josh Perkins gets credit for the tackle, but you really got to give a lot of credit inside to Ty O'Connor, number 63. Just a great effort there, following him out of the pocket, forcing him into the position where Perkins was able to finish him off. It'll bring up fourth down for Montana. That means Chris Hepner is on to try a 37-yard field goal. Try to give the Grizzlies a 11-point lead. The kick is up. It's long enough, and it is good. So the Montana Grizzlies now with a 24-13 lead here in the Montana Power Fall Classic. A look at Chris Hepner's number this, numbers this year, 45 of 46 on extra point attempts. On field goals, Mr. Hepner is pretty accurate as well. He's now 10 of 17, and of course, his longest came down in Idaho State, 54 yards. Well, let's go back down to the sidelines, and Jeff Smith. Thanks, Shane. It looks like Josh Brandon's day is over. They have removed his shoe, his sock, and also the tape on that. It's, the word is a severe ankle sprain right now. They are not saying whether there's any tears or anything severe, but right now he will not be back in the ballgame. That's the word. Shane? Thanks, Jeff. That 
could play a factor later on in the football game. Montana does have a few good running backs behind Brandon on the roster in Brian Gales and Nate Sanders. Right now, the Grizzlies with a 24 to 13 lead over the Bobcats. We've got about a minute and 20 seconds left here in the third quarter. Chris Hepner getting set to kick off the football. Ari Gray and Kenyatta Morgan are back to receive for Montana. This ball is kicked long and deep. Morgan re catches it and then takes a knee in the end zone. So Montana State will take over the football on their own 20 yard line, first and 10. It's important for Montana State to put together a, a productive drive here and answer uh, you know, the Grizzlies points on that drive. Uh, you know, the last thing they want to do is to let this game get out of hand and get down too much. They want to keep this within their reach so they can utilize their rushing game as well as their passing game. So Montana State starts this drive on their own 20-yard line, first and 10. That's Tony Baez in motion. They fake the handoff. Compson rolling to his right. He's got Craig Galley over the middle. Down to about the 39-yard line, a first down for the Bobcats. And just in case you didn't know, that was Craig Galley giving you the signal to let you know that it was a first down. Little play action by the Bobcats. Compson putting the ball on the money. Great catch by the youngster, Galley. First down, MSU. The sophomore from Kalispell. Sets up first and 10 for the Bobcats on the 39-yard line. Montana State trailing 24-13 here in the third quarter of the Montana Power Fall Classic. The pitch to Kinneman. They fake the reserve, reverse to Baez. Kinneman keeps it. Knocked out of bounds at about the 44. Josh Remington, Greg Fitzgerald around the play. Play we've seen a lot of today. They bring that sweep out wide. It's usually Travis Cormany leading the way. That time just enough to turn the corner and pick up a few yards. Second and five. Well, a play like that can be exhausting. It looks as though he runs about 30 yards because it's so uh, so far outside of the wide side of the field, but it's only a pickup of five yards. A whole lot of running for just a little bit of gain. Second down and five for the Bobcats on the 44-yard line. Compson fakes the handoff again. Getting pressure, Eric Beeler brings him down in the backfield, down at about the 30-yard line. Eric Beeler, the junior out of Butte, Montana, that's his eighth sack of the season. He leads Montana. He leads the Montana Grizzly pass rush. Eric's having a big day for the Grizzlies. Two batted down passes and another sack. Sets up third and long for Montana State. Third and 16 as the clock winds down to the end of the third quarter. Looks like the Bobcats are going to let that clock wind down. And that is the end of the third quarter. So after three quarters of action, we've got 15 minutes left to play. The Montana Grizzlies, 24. The Montana State Bobcats, 13. We'll be back with the fourth quarter right after this. Get ready for the fourth quarter on Grizzly Gridiron Classics. The Montana Power Company recognizing Montana's academic achievements with the Academic Achievement Award winners from the high school ranks. Miriam Flatiger from Peerless High School, Cade Berkland from Fort Benton, Ashley Meg from Colstrip, and Joe Sample and Katie Ramsey from Sentinel High School in Missoula. So congratulations to them. The Montana State Bobcats starting off the fourth quarter, trailing 24 to 13. It's third down and 13 from their own 36-yard line. Compson in the shotgun, looking to throw, gets some pressure, gets rid of the football. Tony Baez is there and he's got the football. That's a completion down to about the 25 yard line. A gain of about 40 yards. Well, it's just a simple post pattern on the outside by Baez. He's been doing it all season long, something we have not seen today. He is able to get behind the defensive back. Jake Dennehy, free safety for Montana for the big game. First down, Montana State. 
So it's first down for the Bobcats. First and 10 from the 25-yard line. Tony Baez making another big play for Montana State this year. He's been their big playmaker on offense. We'll see if Montana State can do something. They're uh, right around that tough zone where they've been having struggles in the red zone. Three wide receivers. Baez in motion from Com for Compson. He hands off to Eric Kinneman. The reverse to Kenyatta Morgan. A nice block from Compson. Kinneman, or I should say Morgan, is stopped in the backfield. Brought down at about the 27-yard line. Great job by the linebacker, Greg Fitzgerald. Wasn't fooled by the reverse. Was able to get upfield. Doesn't get the tackle here, but he makes the first hit. He forces Morgan back inside where he can get help from the rest of the Grizzly pursuit. Greg Fitzgerald out of Columbus, Montana. So it's second down and 12 now for the Bobcats on the Montana 27-yard line. The Cats trailing 24 to 13 here in the Montana Power Fall Classic. It's the 97th time these two teams have met on the football field. Thompson calling for a timeout as the play clock expires. He gets the timeout called, however, and Montana State will head to the sidelines. We're going to head to a timeout as well. We'll be back in a minute. Time for the Montana Power Power Play of the Game. It came in the first half. Brian Ayotte handing off to Josh Brannon. He runs 10 yards in the end zone for the touchdown. That would give the Montana Grizzlies a 14-7 lead in the first half. That is your Montana power, power play of the game right now. Josh Brandon is on the sidelines, nursing a twisted ankle. Montana State has the football second and 12 on the Montana 27-yard line. Thompson in the shotgun. Looking to throw, finds Scott Harry out of bounds at about the 15-yard line. Chris Oops. Colvin making the stop. They were able to hook up with Scott Harry a couple times right before the half, but we haven't really seen him besides that. He ran a couple of outs to, to kill the clock when they were trying to make their closing drive, but they look for him to have a big game today, and I think we'll see some more receptions from him in the second half. So it's first and 10 for Montana State on the 15-yard line. Scott Harry coming into the game, 26 catches for 314 yards and four touchdowns. Look to see him get in the action more here in the fourth quarter. The handoff to Kinneman up the middle. He's down to the five. Brought down there, Marcus Wilson, Jake Denny on the tackle, but not before he gained close to 10 yards. Offensive line really opened up a nice hole there to free him into the secondary. Let's see if large hole there, then it's just onto the secondary and see if he can be brought down. Kinnaman, Kinnaman now over 100 yards rushing on the day. Sets up second and one for the Bobcats on the six yard line. Cats with plenty of chances now to get it in the end zone. They just need a yard for the first down. They need six yards to get to the end zone. Here's Thompson, hands off to Kinnaman. Over the left side, brought down in the backfield. Jason Crebo is there. And they may have lost a yard on the play. Crebo is down on the field. Kind of slow to get back up. He's been nursing that toe injury for the last few weeks. I think it turned out it actually was a broken bone in his foot. It's not something that can get worse. Uh, so he's decided in very creepo fashion to tough it out. Uh, not a lot of not a lot of players on either side, Montana State or Montana, would want to miss this ball game. There's nothing Jason can do to treat it either. He just needs time off for the injury to heal. So he might, thought he might as well play. Here's the pitch to Eric Kinneman on third and two. He gets across the five to the four. It'll depend on the spot, but it should be enough for the first down. Close to Grizzly tacklers there at the end of that sweep. They strung it out nicely. I think he may have just made it. That's actually Travis Wright on the carry, not Eric Kinneman. Travis Wright. 5'10". 200 pound junior able to get the first down so it's first and goal for Montana State on the four yard line. Oh 
Here's a look at Rob Thompson's numbers quickly. Eight for 17 for 135 yards and a touchdown. They fake the handoff. They're looking to throw. The pass is caught. It's a touchdown. Touchdown, Montana State. I believe that was the All-American candidate defensive end, Neil Smith, for Montana State. Neil Smith getting it up, getting it done on both sides of the ball today. That's what I thought I saw number 48, but I, I couldn't believe it when I looked down to the roster to see who that was, and it said Neil Smith. And I thought, wow. What a great athletic play for a man of his stature. Six foot five, 245 pounds. I believe he's closer to 260 pounds out of Polson. It's a great athletic play. So the Bobcats are going to go for two here. They trail 24-19. Thompson in the shotgun. The quick throw through the hands of Scott Harry. It's incomplete. The extra point attempt is no good. So your score is now 24-19. Montana with the five-point lead here in the Montana Power Fall Classic. One more quick look at the extra point try right through the hands of Scott Harry. There's about 11 minutes left in this football game. We've got a classic here in Bozeman. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Bozeman, folks. The Montana State Bobcats getting right back in this football game. It's 24-19 with 11 minutes and 17 seconds left on the clock in this first ever Montana Power Fall Classic. Rob Thompson finding the defensive end, Neil Smith, for a touchdown. So Neil not only getting it done on defense, but getting it done on offense as well. It's gotten the Cats back to within five points. As we wind down the fourth quarter, Jeff Rochelle getting set to kick for Montana State. Nate Sanders and Brian Gales are back to receive for Montana. That kick will go out of the end zone. An automatic touchback for Montana. They'll start on the 20-yard line. It's a big series for the Bobcat defense. They've got to step up here. They can't afford to let the Grizzlies put a long drive together and chew up a lot of clock here. They've got to get their offense back on the field, especially now that they've, they're not within the field goal because of the, once again, for the third time this season, they've been struggling with their PAT, which has forced them to go for two there. Of course, we're unsuccessful. Now they're put in a position where they've got to score twice. It's first and 10 for the Grizz on the 20-yard line. Brian Ayotte looking to throw, finds Nate Sanders out of the backfield across the 25, down to about the 30, still on his feet. The play ruled dead. Damon McNeil making the stop. Nate Sanders out of Anaconda, Montana, takes a swing pass. Montana State not allowing the receivers to get open downfield. Ayotte checks off to his running back, and uh, Nate was able to get close to the first down. We'll see how they mark it. First down. It is a first down for the Grizzlies. Nate Sanders stepping in now with Josh Brandon on the sidelines with that ankle injury. Nate Sanders stepping in last week, rushing for over 100 yards for the Grizzlies. The first time they've done that since the third game of the season. The direct snap to Sanders up the middle. A big hit there. And he's brought down by Ty O'Connor on the 33-yard line. Called his name a lot today. Ty O'Connor's been doing a great job of line of scrimmage. He's got good pursuit. He's been chasing the ball all day long, and there he makes another great stop. He put a shot on Nate Sanders. I don't know if Nate's going to leave his feet next time he runs in the middle there. That was a deep leader. That was a deep leader. <laughs> Second down and seven for the Grizzlies on the 33-yard line. Ayat looking to throw to his right. He's got Jim Ferris. He's brought down at about the 38. It's short of the first down. Isaac Hatley was in there on the play. Boy, Ferris really coming into his own. I'm really impressed with him. Uh, only a freshman. He's got great poise in a big game. Um, his first Grizz Cat game. Standing in there making some outstanding catches for Montana. And he's still got his uh, best years ahead of him. Only a freshman, like I said. It's third down and two for Montana on the 38-yard line. A big third down here. 
for the Montana State defense. A big third down for the Montana offense. Four wide receivers. Ayat in the shotgun looking to throw. He's got a man. It's Jim Ferris, but the pass is incomplete. Ferris can't hang on to it. That'll set up fourth down and two. Now, I don't know if the sun had any uh, anything to do with that. As you can see, the shadows cast off the players. It looks like as he's going back to the quarterback, that he may have lost that one in the sun. I don't know. Nevertheless, the Grizz are forced to punt. Jake Dennehy is back to kick for Montana. Ari Gray, Kenyatta Morgan back to receive for Montana State. Nine minutes, 33 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. The Cats trailing 24 to 19 in the Montana Power Fall Classic. Dennehy's kick comes down at about the 35, takes a grizzly bounce down to the 20, down to the 15. It's still rolling. Looks like it's going to be knocked dead at about the 13-yard line. So another favorable bounce for Jake Dennehy, the free safety turned punter here this season. After Dallas Neal went down with an injury early in the season, he was redshirted. Dallas Neal, of course, a big part of Mon the Montana special teams unit the last couple of years. But Jake Dennehy stepping in this year with the punting duties and doing rather well. Jake with a nice bump and run. <laughs> He's been averaging 40 yards a kick this year. That's bump and run. That's a golf good. term, right? Yes, it is. I had to get that in there. <laughs> First and 10 on the 12-yard line for Montana State. Two wide receivers to the left side. The handoff to Kinnaman. He breaks the first set of tacklers, but he's brought down at about the 14-yard line. Well, Montana State only needing one touchdown uh, to take the lead. Can, can afford to run the ball. Still nine minutes left in this fourth quarter. Kinnaman up the middle. Gaining a few. It's always important to get a few yards on first down. That means that opens up so many more options uh, for second and third down. Quick update for you on the NAIA playoffs. Montana Tech leading Minnesota Crookson 38 to 10 in the fourth quarter. It's second and eight for the Bobcats on the 14-yard line. Thompson in the shotgun, looking to throw, looking to go to his right. That's Kinneman, but the ball is overthrown over his head, incomplete. Looks like Montana State was trying to isolate Kinneman, who has got good speed. We've seen a lot of that today. They wanted to isolate him on Krebo. As you can see, Josh Brand is still trying to get involved with this game. Uh, they tried to isolate him on Krebo, though. Uh, good defense by Krebo. Even with the injured foot and all, was able to keep up with him. So it's third down and eight for the Bobcats on their own 14-yard line. A big third down here for Montana State. They want to maintain possession of this football. That's Tony Baez in motion. Thompson faking the handoff, throwing to Kenyatta Morgan on the screen. He's across the 20, out to about the 22-yard line. Awfully close to a first down. We'll have to see where they spot the football. I don't know if he got the first down, Shane, but he's sure been effective today. Coming off the injury, Coach Heisel wasn't sure if he'd play at all. If he was, if he would be able to get anything done. But once again, he's making another big play for the Bobcats. From the first down at their own 22. It is a first down for Montana State. Bobcats taking a page out of the Grizzlies playbook right in the middle of the screen. Eight minutes. 15 seconds left here in the football game. Montana with the 24 to 19 lead over Montana State. It's first and 10 for the Bobcats on their own 22. Thompson handing off to Kinneman. He goes to his left. He's across the 25 to the 26. Out of bounds there. Jason Krebo forcing him out. Kinneman able to Pick up a tough four yards on first down. Boy, the Montana State faithful starting to get into this game, making a lot of noise. Defensive coordinator Jerome Sowers of the Montana Grizzlies. He's got his hands full right now. The defense needs to come up with a big stop. It's second and six for Montana State on the 26-yard line. Two wide receivers, two backs in the backfield. Thompson is under center. The handoff to Kinneman again, up the middle. Keeps the feet moving, gets out to about the 30-yard line where he's met by a whole bunch of the guys in the white shirts. 
Some tough yards there for Kinneman. It brings up another tough third down for the Bobcats. At this point in the game, they've got to keep this drive alive. Third down and three. Another third down situation for Montana State. As the clock continues to wind down, seven minutes, 24 seconds left in this football game. There you see the numbers on Kinneman, 27 carries, 119 yards. Third and three from the 30. Thompson fakes the handoff, rolls to his right. You gotta keep the football. It's out to about the 32, maybe the 33 yard line. It'll depend on the spot. Awfully close to the first down. Looked like Fitzgerald was able to catch up to Thompson from behind. Officials calling the timeout. They're gonna bring out the chains. Here's another look at the play. It's a little play action pass. Uh, Montana defensive backs with great coverage downfield. Thompson tucks it away and uh, we'll see how close he comes to the first down. Chain crew having to do double duty tonight because that's uh, all the way to the opposite end of the field from where they're located. Well, it gives us a pretty good look at the measurement. And it looks like they are short of the first down. Cliff Eisel doesn't have to think about it at all. He sent the punt team out. On fourth and short, the punt team is out to kick Matt Piott back to punt for Montana State. I think that's a smart decision. There's still seven minutes in the game left. Uh, if you don't get the first down here, that's that's almost given field goal for Hepner, and then it's going to take two scores as opposed to one. So I think that's a smart smart choice by Heisel. Travis Walker is back to receive for Montana. Piot back to punt for Montana State. Here's the kick. A booming drive, drives Walker back to his 25. Gets out to about the 30, the 33. He's knocked down there by Eric Gray. Eric Gray, once again, the two freshmen from Deer Lodge doing a great job on special teams. It's 24-19, Montana with a five-point lead in the Montana Power Fall Classic. Welcome back to Bozeman, everybody. The Montana Grizzlies leading the Montana State Bobcats 24 to 19 in the fourth quarter of the Montana Power Fall Classic. There's six minutes, 58 seconds left on the clock. Montana has the football first and 10 on their own 33 yard line. Jo uh, Brian Gales is in the backfield for Montana now. That's Josh Paffhausen coming in motion. Ayat with the handoff to Gales right up the middle. He's crossed the 35, but not much farther after that. Walter Robinson part of the play, making the tackle. Grizzlies trying to run the ball here. They'd love to chew up some clock if they can do it. Brian Gales with a conservative run up the middle. Gain of about two or three yards. Sets up second and eight for Montana on the 35 yard line. A big drive here for Montana. They want to keep possession of the football, keep it out of the hands of Montana State and run some time off that clock. Ayat looking to throw. He's got Raul Pacheco on the sideline, but he overthrows him incomplete. Bring up third down. Uh, Raul Pacheco out of the wide receiver position running a a hitch and go, you can see Brian Ayat with a pump fake as he gets back. Brian Ayat with a pump. Cool back, Montana State's right cornerback didn't bite on it at all, good defense. So it's third down and eight for the Montana Grizzlies. Three wide receivers to the near side of the field. Ayat in the shotgun. Ayat rolling out to his left. He's got some time, he's got a man. It's Justin Olsen, but it skips off the ground before Olsen can make the catch. And it'll bring up fourth down. There is a flag down on the play though. I think the flag's gonna show a holding here. Uh, I think Ty O'Connor was, was being held inside, trying to pursue the ball as Ayat rolled out of the pocket. But uh, as those offensive line will do, they'll uh, get a grip on you whenever they can. Right now it's fourth down and eight, but we'll see 
what happens with this penalty. Spoken like a true defensive player right there. <laughs> The Bobcats decline the penalty, sets up fourth and eight for the Grizz in Montana State, or Montana will punt. Jake Dennehy on to punt for the Grizzlies. Kenyatta Morgan, Ari Gray back to receive for the Bobcats. Just over six minutes left here in the fourth quarter. Dennehy's kick is a low line drive. Morgan fields it on about the 22. Spots a hole, gets out to about the 29. He's brought down there by the Grizzlies. Paul Jenkins, Greg Fitzgerald, Garth Gelker in on the play. We're going to take another quick timeout. We'll be back for the finish of the Montana Power Fall Classic right after this. Welcome back, folks. We'll get back down to Jeff Smith in just a minute for the Tyorama players of the game. Right now, it's the Montana State Bobcats trailing Montana 24 to 19. Five minutes, 58 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. Possibly the biggest series of Montana State Bobcat offense of the game right here. Bobcats need to get some points on this drive. Rob Compson is under center. There's two wide receivers to the far side of the field. He fakes the handoff. Fitzgerald is coming through. That's Craig Galley looking to make the catch, but it's incomplete. Jake Dennehy and Josh Remington back on the coverage. Boy, the Kalispell connection. Remington <laughs> on Galley. Wonder if they've played against one another. Good job uh, of Remington sticking together, sticking with the speedster galley. We'll change the pace for the Bobcats there. Come out and try and go for it all over the top early. You might have to give your friend Grady Bennett a call and find out the answer to that question, whether Josh Remington and Craig Galley ever played together on the Flathead Braves. It's second down and 10 now for the Bobcats on the 30 yard line. That's Tony Baez in motion. Thompson faking the handoff, rolling to his right. The screen pass, or the rollout pass, I should say, to Scott Harry. Gets out to about the 36-yard line. Gain of about six yards. Just a nice play action pass. A controlled out route, short out route by Harry, the tight end. Pick up of about six yards on the play. You've got to believe Scott Harry would really like to make something happen at this point in the game. He's got to be smart a little bit after that attempt at two-point conversion. It's third down and four for Montana State. Five minutes, ten seconds left on the clock. The Bobcats with the ball on their own 36-yard line. Thompson fakes the handoff, looking to throw over the middle. Intended for Tony Baez, but he can't come up with the football. It's fourth down now for the Bobcats, and the punt team is coming onto the field. Well, it was a difficult, it was a difficult uh, ball to catch. Looks like it was thrown a little bit behind Vaez. He did get his hands on it, but been, it would have been an outstanding catch were he to hang on to that one. So Piot is back to punt once again for the Montana State Bobcats. Travis Walker back to receive for the Montana Grizzlies. Five minutes, two seconds left on the clock. Grizz hanging on to a five-point lead. There's the kick from Piot. It's going over towards the sidelines. Walker calls for the fair catch at about the 26-yard line. That's where the Grizzlies will take over first and 10. Cornerback Robert Carter right there to force the fair catch. He's been down there all day consistently on the punt team. He's been the first guy down. So it's first and 10 for Montana on their own 26 yard line. Ayat under center, four wide receivers. Nate Sanders is in the backfield. They fake the handoff to Sanders. Ayat rolls to his right, finds Pacheco at the 27. He's gonna be brought down there. The shoestring tackle from Isaac Hatley. Oh, 
Good play by Brent Pease in the Montana offense. Uh, Montana State probably expecting them to run the ball. Come back with a little play action pass. May have caught the Montana State defense off balance. Uh, good job of picking up about five yards on first down for the Montana Grizzlies. It's second and five now for the Grizzlies on their own 32-yard line. Four minutes, 14 seconds left on the clock. Four wide receivers. Ayat in the shotgun. Looking to throw, looking over the middle. He's got his man. That's Josh Paffhausen, the senior from Butte. There is a flag on the play. In the area you usually see holding. No signal yet. It is a penalty on the Montana Grizzlies. That'll bring them back. Dylan Tripp talking things over with the officials. We'll get the call from referee John Keyes. The holding penalty on Montana. The Bobcats accept it. Brings up second down. And a long, looks to be about 20 yards for Montana. As the clock continues to run down, however, just under four minutes remaining here in Bozeman. Second and 20 from the 17-yard line for the Grizzlies. Three wide receivers to the near side of the field. The quick, the quick pitch, the shovel pass to Nate Sanders up the middle, across the 20, out to the 25, still on his feet. Finally brought down by Tyson Tucker. Well, the Grizzly offense trying to take advantage of the fact that uh, defensive end Neil Smith does get such a great pass rush. The, all the front line of the Bobcats coming up field very aggressively there. They get caught underneath. He's able to pick up nearly as much as they lost on the penalty. So it's third down and 12 for the Montana on their own 25-yard line. Three minutes, 10 seconds left on the clock. Three wide receivers to the near side of the field. Ayad is in the shotgun. Looking to throw, looking to his left. Has plenty of time, goes over the middle to Jim Ferris, but it's incomplete. Some nice coverage there from Damon McNeil. Boy, great defense by Damon McNeil. Your big time players come up big at big time times. <laughs> Something like that. It's a tongue twister. Well said, Matt. Great defense, though. Uh, what a huge play. Only three minutes left in the game. Enables Montana State to get the ball back. Uh, and with an opportunity to win this thing. Once again, you see what a big effect those penalties can have. The Grizzlies doing some things pretty effectively. And the holding penalty brings them back. Now they're forced to punt the ball. Fourth and 12. Jake Dennehy with the punt. Not a great kick. Not, comes down about the 45, gets a roll though out to about the 37 yard line of Montana State. That is where the Bobcats will take over the football with two minutes and 47 seconds remaining on the clock. They have two timeouts remaining. They trail 24 to 19 on the scoreboard. Now this is the way, uh, you know, this is the way games should be, the Montana, Montana State Big time rivalry. Pride on the line, second place in the Big Sky Conference on the line. It's first and 10 for Montana State on their own 38 yard line. That's Scott Harry in motion. Thompson is in the shotgun. He throws to back to the left side, Kenyatta Morgan, and he is stopped in his tracks by Chris Colvin. Great job defensively by Colvin there. He wasn't fooled at all. Came up, made the play right at the line of scrimmage. Bobcats going to the no huddle here, trying to save time. Second down and 10 for the Cats. Two minutes, 20 seconds left in the game. Thompson under center, dropping back, looking to throw. He's got a man, that's Craig Galley. He's out to the 44. That's where he meets a whole bunch of Grizzlies. Justin Gaines, Josh Remington in on the play. Montana playing that soft zone defense, not wanting Montana State to get any yardage downfield limiting their yardage and then coming up and making the stop Josh Brandon 
gets a hold and takes him down. Third and five now. Compson back to throw again over the middle. He's got his man, Tony Vaez, down at the 42-yard line. That's enough for a first down for the Bobcats. First and 10 on the Montana 44-yard line. One minute, 46 seconds left on the clock. Well, that's just a total Montana state. So it's we'll first get, we'll get and 10. First and 10 for the Cats. Thompson looking to throw again. Scott Harry with the catch at the 40. Brought down there by Jason Miller. In bounds. The clock continues to run. One minute, 29 seconds left in the fourth quarter. This hurry up offense has been very effective for the Bobcats. Able to move this ball down in a hurry. Save time. Second down and seven from the 40 yard line. Thompson barking signals to his receivers. He's back to throw again. Over the middle again. It's caught by Kenyatta Morgan at the 27 yard line. Enough for another first down for Montana State. One know, minute, eight seconds left. I don't know if we're going to get the replay there, but you can see that uh, trailing on the play was a tight end, Scott Harry. Looked like they might be going with a little possible hook and ladder had he had a little more time after he caught the ball. So it's first and ten for Montana State on the 28-yard line. One minute, eight seconds left in this ball game. Thompson with the handoff to Travis Wright. He's over the 30 to the 20, still on his feet, brought down at about the 17-yard line. Close to another first down for Montana State. The clock, though, continuing to run. 56 seconds left on the clock. It's a, the, the officials rule that it is a first down. So it's first and 10 for the Cats on the 18-yard line. Once again, the Bobcats forced to get the touchdown without the missed PATs. Could have been in field goal range here, possibly tie the football game. The Cats need to get in the end zone. Rob Thompson dropping back, looking to throw. He's got Kenyatta Morgan on the 12-yard line. The pass is complete, brought down there by Justin Gaines. Clock continues to run, 42 seconds left. Second down now for Montana State. The ball on the 12 yard line, 34 seconds now left in the game. Rob Thompson handing off to Travis Wright. He's to the 10, he's to the five, he's knocked out of bounds at about the three yard line by Chris Colvin. It'll be first and goal for the Bobcats on the three yard line with 27 seconds left in this game. Travis Wright, a big run here. Boy, he got a big, big block from Vaez on the defensive back to spring the outside. Vaez showing he's the complete receiver. Not only can he catch the ball, but he can also block. Well, we've seen that play so much today, and they've been so effective with it, getting those lead blockers out in front, and getting to the corner and just letting that back go to work. The Montana defense calling a timeout here with 27 seconds left. The Bobcats moving the football awfully well here late in the game. That drive started on their own 40-yard line. Now they are on the Montana three-yard line, first and goal with 27 seconds left on the clock. They need to get a touchdown, though. They trail by five points, 24 to 19. Boy, could this be the, the end of the Montana Grizzlies dominance of the state of Montana? So many years, the Montana State Bobcats haven't been able to pull off a win against the Grizzlies. But from the position they're in now, they've got a, an excellent opportunity to do so. Well, the, the Bobcats have lost so many close games this year with the exception of the Portland State game. They've been with one or two point loss. Just another time, and it's, maybe it's their turn to get over the top. It's been a long 11-year wait for the Montana State Bobcat fans. They haven't done it yet, but they're awfully close. They're on the three-yard line, first and goal. 27 seconds left on the clock. Thompson is under center. It's Eric Kinneman in the backfield. They pitch to Kinneman. He's running to his left. He's got the corner. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, Bobcats. Eric Kinneman has given the Bobcats a 25 to 24 lead. And this place has gone nuts. They are going bonkers here in Bozeman. The Montana State left sideline has just erupted over there, Shane. These kids have been waiting a long time to get a piece of this and 
right now they can feel like they've got a good shot. Montana State now with a 25 to 24 lead. Looks like the Bobcats are gonna go for two on this to try to give themselves a three point lead with 22 seconds left. Thompson, the pitch to Eric Kinneman. He's got the hole, he's, now he does not get in. They bring him down on the one inch line. So the extra point attempt is no good. Montana State with a 25 to 24 lead over the Montana Grizzlies. 22 seconds left on the clock. I believe that was Beeler on the tackle. It remains to see just how big a play that could have been. Grizzlies now in a position where they can go down and win it with the field goal. Not only are these uh, current Montana and Montana State players playing for themselves and for their prospective cities, they're also playing for for a lot of alums and a lot of uh, past students of these establishments. So uh, there's a lot riding on this game, not only with the players that are actually playing this game, but people who are also involved outside of the football That's team. so true, Matt. You know, if you live in the state of Montana, you're a Bobcat or a Grizzly. There's no in between. Quickly, let's go downstairs to Jeff Smith. Thanks so much, Shane. We got uh, our representatives from Tyrama here. John Tompkins is going to award the player of the game from University of Montana. We're happy for Brian Aya. And over here we have Robin Toner of Tyrama, who is our Montana State recipient today. Eric Kenneman. All right, they are going to the universities will be presented scholarships of two hundred and fifty dollars in the names of those players from Tyrama. Shane. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you very much. So your players of the game, Brian Ayat for the Montana Grizzlies, Eric Kinneman for the Montana State Bobcats. Kinneman, of course, with a three-yard touchdown run just a few minutes ago to give the Montana State Bobcats a 25 to 24 lead. Jeff Groeschel getting set to kick off. Nate Sanders and Brian Gales are back to receive for Montana. The kick is deep and goes out of bounds at the 20-yard line. That is a penalty. That means that Montana will get the football. They can either elect to have them kick again or they will get the football, I believe, on the 35. That's a big penalty. Uh, in because no time went off the clock. The Bobcats come into this game, the least penalized team in the big sky. Today, some big penalties that have really hurt them. Right before the half, they line up with 12 men on the field. Give the Grizzlies one more play, turned into a touchdown. Remains to be seen what that penalty is going to do. So there's 22 seconds left. The Montana Grizzlies trailing 25 to 24. They've got the football on their own 35-yard line. Three wide receivers to the near side of the field. Ayat in the shotgun looking to throw. Got some time. Incomplete intended for Josh Pafhausen. 16 seconds left on the clock. If Montana can gain about 25 or 30 yards, they can get in the range of uh, Hepner. He's got a strong leg, and he's uh, kicked some big field goals this year. Probably enough time for two plays, possibly three, for the Grizzlies. He would be kicking into the wind, though, here at Reno H. Sale, H. Sale Stadium in Bozeman. 16 seconds left on the clock. Second and 10 for Montana on their own 35. Again, three receivers to the near side. Ayat in the shotgun. Looking to throw. Has the time. Over the middle. Going long to Justin Olsen. And he's got the football on the 20-yard line. Down to the 19. The Grizz call a timeout. A huge play from Ayat to Justin Olsen. Unbelievable. Half of this crowd is off struck and half of it is celebrating. The Montana Grizzlies calling timeout with eight seconds left. They have the football on the Montana State 19 yard line. Brian Ayat, a huge throw to Justin Olson. A 45 yard pass play right there. Unbelievable. Guys, give me your thoughts. Uh, once again, I hate to keep saying it, but you just look back to the PAT, two-point conversion, the Bobcats been snake bit with that kicking game all year long, and it's put them in another bad position here. 
So there's eight seconds left on the clock. Montana still has one timeout remaining. They have the football on the Montana State 19-yard line, first down and 10. Well, I'm not quite sure what Mont well, Montana's got a lot of possibilities. They can throw a pass near the sideline, get out of bounds to stop the clock. And because they do have one timeout left, they can throw it across the middle and it'll still stop the clock. They also have the option to run it around to the outside and, and have the ability to get out of bounds, stop the clock, or run it up the middle and use their timeout. So there's all kinds of possibilities here. First and 10 for the Grizz. Fumbles the snap. Ayat does. Tries to get the football back. He does, but he's brought down at about the 20-yard line. Uh, they, the Grizz call a timeout with four seconds left, so they are now out of timeouts. That means that Chris Hepner will come onto the field and attempt the game-winning field goal here in the Montana Power Fall Classic. Chris Hepner, 10 of 17 for field goals this year. It looks like this one will be from about 40 to 42 yards. He is two of five on the season from that range. Chris Hepner, a Montana native from Great Falls, growing up in Montana. I'm sure he's probably dreamed of the opportunity to have a chance to kick the winning field goal in a Grizzly Cat game. It will actually be about 38 yards for this game-winning field goal with four seconds left on the clock. Chris Hepner, two of three from 30 to 39 yards this year on the season. Of course, he kicked that long one of 54 yards back in Pocatello back in October. Now the Bobcats are calling a timeout. They want to let Chris Hepner think about this some more. That'll leave him with one more time out after this, too. I wouldn't be surprised if they were trying to really ice him down and use the other one as soon as they get ready to snap the ball again. Uh, Chris, that, go ahead. The, the sun's starting to, to go down here, too. You can tell by the shadows on the field uh, starting to cool down. This is a smart move by Montana State, you know, try and tighten up the kicker and get him to think about this a little more than maybe he'd want to. Chris Hepner collecting his thoughts out there on the field. I talked with him earlier in the year. He's never had the opportunity to kick a game-winning kick here at Montana. And when I talked with him, he said he would love the opportunity to get that chance. And, well, now he's, he's got his opportunity, that's for sure. It's not much bigger than this one. The Grizzlies trailing 25 to 24 with four seconds left on the clock. Raul Pacheco will be your holder. It will be a 37-yard attempt. And Montana State, just like you said, Mike, they call that last time out. Let Chris think about this just a little bit longer. Well, I don't know how much effect that actually has. You know, these kickers live for this situation. This is what they want. This is what they hope for. So I don't know if it'll be effective. I think the I think I'm emotionally distraught here. <laughs> it's the former Bobcat coming out in you. It's coming out a little bit. It's it's a little hard to be impartial at this point in the game, but I think that's good. I think the whole state of Montana right now knows which side of the, this kick they're on, and they're going to wait for it to happen. They've definitely gotten their money's worth today here at Reno H. Sales Stadium, actually all over the state of Montana if you're watching with us. This has been a whale of a football game. Chris Hepner on to try the game-winning field goal. Montana State leading 25-24, four seconds left on the clock. The Grizzlies sideline holding hands, probably throwing up a little prayer into the sky, hoping for the best of luck. Here is the kick. Raul Pacheco is your holder. Chris Hepner, 20, 37 yards, the game winner. The kick is up. And it is good. The Montana Grizzlies have come back to win this football game 27 to 25 over the Montana State Bobcats. The Grizzlies are going nuts on the field. The Bobcats can't believe it. I think the Bobcats are stunned. You know, they get they put it in the end zone, they make the big drive, they answer the call when they have to. Unfortunately, they didn't get the PAT. They didn't get the, the first two-point conversion. They tried it again. They came up about six inches short. We talked about it at the time that it was going to be a big play because it gave the Grizzlies an opportunity to come back and win it with the field goal. And the Grizzlies stepped up and responded. 
I tell you, without without considering the outcome either way, it was a it was a fantastic game. Uh, both teams played great. It was a toss up. Montana seemed to get a little bit luckier than uh, Montana State this year. You saw the scoreboard, folks. Montana 27, Montana State 25. We'll be back with more in just a minute. Chris Hefner with a 37-yard field goal to win the football game for the Montana Grizzlies to give them a 27-25 victory over the Montana State Bobcats. Let's head down to the field to Jeff Smith. Thanks, Shane. We're down here with Coach McDenahy. Not exactly the way you would have scripted it, but how are you feeling right now? Well, none of these, none of these games are ever easy. Uh, Montana State played very well. They made some huge plays. Very proud of our players to be able to come back and and get enough yardage to give ourselves a chance to win the game. You, did, you, did you think you guys had a chance left when they scored that last touchdown there with less than a minute to play? Our, our, kids, our, our kids never quit or give up. I'm out of here. See you later. Thanks, Coach. As you can see, things are going nuts down here. We'll toss it back out to you, Shane. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Are you doing all right down there? It looks like the Grizzly fans are a little bit excited this afternoon, and they should be. They've come away with a 27 to 25 last second victory over Montana State. We're gonna take one more quick timeout. We'll be back in just a minute. The Montana Grizzlies with a 27 to 25 victory over Montana State this afternoon here at Reno H. Sale Stadium in Bozeman. Let's head down to the field. Jeff Smith has Montana's game-winning hero. Thanks, Shane. Well, the crowd cleared out just a little bit. And Mr. Hepner here with us. What does it feel like to kick a field goal like that? No, it feels great. It feels really good. I'm just glad for my line and my holder. I got to give them all the credit. I got to give them all the credit. Did you, did you plan? You knew this was going to be a tight game. Did you plan on having you make the difference in this game today? I didn't plan on it, but it came down to it, and I was ready to do it. I'm just glad my line and Manzanares and Pacheco can hold it all. I'm glad for the offense to get the ball down here. Man. Guys heading into the playoffs now, probably most likely. Uh, what do you guys plan for? Oh, we're planning just to beat everybody. We're ready to do it this year. All right. Ready to go. Thanks so much. We'll toss it back up to you, Shane. Yeah. Things a little bit more calm down here on the field. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Chris Hepner. They don't get much bigger than that, beating your cross-state rival with a game-winning field goal from 37 yards. Let's take a look at some of the replays, some of the highlights from the end of the football game. This was the Montana Grizzlies on their own 35 with 22 seconds left. Ayat going deep over the middle and a spectacular catch here by Justin Olson, a 45-yard gain. Gave the Montana Grizzlies the football on the Montana State 19-yard line. That would, of course, set up this with just four seconds left on the clock. Chris Hepner from 37 yards. And it was up and true, straight through the uprights. The Montana Grizzlies coming away with a 27-25 win over the Montana State Bobcats in the 97th meeting between these two Treasure State rivals. The Montana Power Fall Classic. It's been a lot of fun for us. For Matt Clark and Mike Callahan, I'm Shane Ettinger. We'll see you next time. Grizzly Gridiron Classics. 
With win number 12 in the streak in the books after that victory, Montana went on to the Division 1AA playoffs where they lost to McNeese State in the first round after back-to-back -back years of making the national championship game. As always, thanks for tuning in to this week's Grizzly Gridiron Classic. Next week, we'll stick with the Montana and Montana State rivalry, but we'll go forward one year to 1998 with another thriller between these two programs in a mud bowl no one could forget right here in Missoula. See you then.